more praises to the most high again so tonight's topic is a continuation of the class that we had earlier this week six stages of being born again we dealt with your spiritual life must change because the lord gave us the power to change our spirits the lord gave us the power to change the way we eat and the way we our health the way we must take care of ourselves we must exercise we must eat healthy so on and so forth so tonight we're going to deal with the third stage your social life must change how you deal with your brothers and sisters in this truth okay so we're going to be dealing with your social life watch this um let's open up give me the book of Sirach 25 verse 1 Ecclesiastes chapter 25 and verse 1 let's read that The book of Ecclesiastes, chapter 25, verse 1. In three Great. things, I was beautified and mm -hmm. stood up beautiful, both before God and men. The unity of brethren, Come on. the love of neighbors, mm -hmm. a man and a, and a wife that agree together. So now, when it says, in three things, I was beautified and stood up, stood up beautiful, both before God and men. So what stands beautiful before God and men is the what? The unity of brethren, okay? The love of neighbors, a man and a wife that agree together. The part I want to deal with is the unity of brethren and the love of neighbors, okay? Because when it comes to your social life, you must be able to know how to work well with others. You must know how to deal well with your brothers, meaning you must be able to know how to apply the moral and the civil law, because this is what it, this is what goes into it goes into that. You must know how to what apply the civil and the moral law, and that's where Israel struggles. You understand? We struggle with the moral and the civil laws. How to deal with your neighbor? Okay, read that again, verse one. The book of Ecclesiastes, chapter twenty-five, verse one. In Wait. three things I was beautified, and stood up beautiful, both before God and men. The unity of brethren, oh, brethren, the love of neighbor. It says the unity of brethren. I want to deal with that. It says the unity of brethren. The only way we are going to unite, the only thing that is going to unite us is what? Give me that in Baruch 4 verse 17. The, there's only one thing that is going to unite the 12 tribes of Israel. Okay, watch this. Baruch 4 verse 17. Let's read that. The book of Baruch, chapter 4 verse 17. No, no, verse 37, verse 37. Come on. The book of Baruch, chapter 4, verse 37. Go ahead. Lo, thy sons come, whom thou sentest away. Mm -hmm. They come gathered together from the east to the west by the word of the Holy One, rejoicing in the glory of God. You see what he's saying? He says, thy sons come, whom thou sentest away. Because if the Bible is written in a masculine form. This goes into both men and women because we all went into captivity together. Both men and women, sons and daughters. All that, give me that in Deuteronomy 28, verse 37. Deuteronomy 28, verse 37. Okay. The book of Deuteronomy, chapter 28, verse 37. Mm -hmm. You know and what? Also... Yeah, yeah, read it, read it, read it. Now that I pull it, read it. The book of Deuteronomy, chapter 28, verse 37. Come on. And that will become an astonishment. No, no. A proverb. Verse 32. And not verse, verse, hold on. Wait. Verse 32. Read verse 32 for me. The book, excuse me, sir. The book of Deuteronomy, chapter 28, verse 32. Thy Wait. sons and thy daughters shall be given unto another people. Come on. And then I shall look and fail with longing for them all the, all the day long. And they shall be no might in thine hand. You see, this is the prophecy. This is the curses that will come upon us as a nation. You understand? It says, our sons and daughters shall be given unto another nation of people. He says, our eyes shall look and we're going to fail with longing for our sons, our daughters, day, he says, all the day long. And there shall be no might in our hands. We didn't have might to retrieve our sons and daughters back. Military might, economic might. We didn't have none of that. You understand? So both men and women, sons and daughters, mothers and fathers, we all went into captivity. Get Baruch chapter 4. Okay? Baruch chapter 4 and verse 10. Read that. 
The book of Baruch, chapter 4, verse 10. Read. For I saw the captivity of my sons and daughters, mm -hmm. which the everlasting brought upon them. You see that thing? It says, for I saw the captivity of my sons and daughters. So it's not just the sons that went into captivity, their daughters as well, okay? With the everlasting brought upon them. The everlasting is the Mosai. Now jump down to verse 37 again now. The book of Baruch, chapter 4, verse 37. Go ahead. Lo, thy sons come, whom thou sentest away. Mm -hmm. They come gathered together from the east to the west by the word of the Holy One, rejoicing in, in the glory of God. You see what he's saying? He says, thy sons come, whom thou sentest away, because sons and daughters, we all went into captivity. We were colonized. We went through the system of apartheid. We're still going through it this day. You understand? Colonization, apartheid, forced migration, captivity, slavery, being sold, so on and so forth. All the atrocities that have come upon us, it says what? It says they come gathered together from the east to the west, meaning from the eastern hemisphere and also the western hemisphere. That's what this is going into. Get that in um, Isaiah 43. Okay, give me Isaiah 43 real quick. Isaiah 43, let's read verse three. Isaiah chapter 43 and verse three. You know what, let's- The book Isaiah chapter you know, 43. Mm, wait, um, wait, wait, wait. Mm, let's read verse five. Let's get to the point. Isaiah 43 verse five. Yes, sir. The book Isaiah chapter 43 verse five. Read. Fear not, for I am with thee. Mm -hmm. I will bring thy seed from the east and gather thee from the west. Read that thing again. The book of Isaiah, chapter 43, verses 5. Mm -hmm. Fear not, for I am with thee. I will bring thy seed from the east and gather thee from the west. You see what he's saying? He says, I'm going to bring your seed from the what? From the east. That's the eastern hemisphere and gather thee from the west. That's the western hemisphere. You see what the Lord is saying? The Americas, north, central, and south, now goes into the continent of Africa. That's the eastern hemisphere. You understand? That includes China. That includes East India. That includes Mozambique. You understand? That includes Japan, so on and so forth. Mongolia. You understand? Uh, Madagascar. Okay? All those places, that's where the 12 tribes of Israel, we are scattered there as well. You understand? So go back to Baruch 4 now. Verse 37 again. The book of Baruch, chapter 4, verse 37. Read. Lo, thy sons come, whom thou sentest away. Mm -hmm. they, come, they come gathered together from the east to the west by the word of the Holy One, rejoicing in the glory of God. So now what we read in Sirach 25 verse 1, when the Lord is saying, the unity of brethren, the one thing that's going to unite the black man and the black woman, the Native American Indian man, you understand? The, Mex the so-called Mexican man, the Puerto Rican man, is what? The word of the Mosa, the word of the Holy One. The unity of brethren, we are not going to unite outside of God's laws. That's what we need to understand, you understand? And today as a people, we've been conditioned to be individualized. That's why when it comes to unity, we don't want to come together. That's why today black men and black women don't know how to work well together. Why? Because the word of the Lord is not what uniting them. You understand? That's why there's so much division among us because we're not moving in the spirit of Christ. Get that in uh, Zechariah, okay? Get that in Zechariah chapter four. Zechariah four and six, read that. The book of Zechariah chapter four verse six. Read. I have, apologies for that. The book of Zacharias, chapter four, verse six. Then he answered and spake unto me, saying, this is the word of the Holy, this is the word of the Lord unto Zerubbabel, saying, come on, not by might, nor mm -hmm. by power, but by my spirit, saith the Lord of hosts. You see that then? But by my spirit, saith the Lord of hosts. Meaning by the spirit of the Lord, that's how we are gonna, we're going to be able to witness the unity of the brethren. The spirit of the Lord is what's going to unite us because the spirit of the Lord, that's the spirit of Christ. 
He's the only one that is gathered in the 12 tribes of Israel. So the reason why we are able to unite now in these last days is because of what? The spirit of Christ is what's gathering us together to be as one. Understand that. Get that in Genesis 49 real quick. Okay. Genesis 49. The spirit of Christ is the only way, is the only, he's the only one that can unite the 12 tribes of Israel together. Read that. Genesis 49 verse 10. Okay, come on. The book of Genesis chapter 49 verse 10. Great. The scepter shall not depart from Judah. Mm -hmm. No, a lawgiver from between his feet. Great. And until Shiloh come, mm -hmm. and unto him shall the gathering of the people be. Shiloh is talking about the peaceable one. Let's talk about Christ, our Lord and Savior, the Black Messiah. It says, unto him shall the gathering of the people be. So Christ is the only one that is bringing the 12 tribes of Israel back together. His spirit that is upon the prophets. You understand? So that's why he says the unity of brethren we cannot unite outside of the spirit of Christ. We cannot unite if we don't keep God's commandments and believe on his son and the sacrifice that he made for us to give us the chance to get the kingdom. We are not going to achieve that thing. Understand that thing, okay? Now, go back to Sarah 25 and one again. The book of Ecclesiasticus, chapter 25, verses one. Right. In three things I was beautified and stood up beautiful, both before God and men. Mm -hmm. The unity of brethren. The unity of the brethren. Love. So what's going to bring the brothers together, the brothers and sisters together as one is the spirit of Christ. We must come gather together by the word of the Holy Spirit. Not by politics, not by religion, not by toy toy, mm -mm. not by the Roman Catholic Church, not by ZCC, not by Bazalwani. No. By the word of the Holy One. That's how they, that's why you go, that's when you're gonna see the true unity of the brethren, the power of unity of the 12 tribes of Israel. That's what this movement is about. You understand? Ray, come on. The love of neighbors. The love of neighbors. The love of neighbors. That one right there, the love of neighbors. Now watch this. Let's see who's the neighbors. Give me that in Leviticus 19. The love of neighbors. We dealt with the unity of the brethren. The love, then it says the love of neighbors. Okay, watch this. Leviticus 19. You know this one. Leviticus 19, verse 17. We're going to read down. Come on. The book of Leviticus, chapter 19, verse 17. Read. Thou shalt not hate thy brother in thine heart. Thou shalt not hate your brother in your heart. That's a commandment. Come on. Thou shalt Come on. in any way, thou shalt in any wise rebuke thy neighbor mm -hmm. and not suffer sin upon him. You see that? It says, Thou shalt in any wise rebuke thy neighbor and not suffer sin upon your neighbor. So when you, it, the Bible says, Thou shalt hate, not hate your brother in your heart. So when you don't rebuke your neighbor, when your neighbor is going into the midst of sin, the law says you hate your brother. You understand? Because you suffer sin upon your brother. That's what the Bible is saying. Okay, read. Come on. Thou shalt not avenge. Mm -hmm. No bear any grudge against the children of thy people. Read. But thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself. Mm -hmm. I am the Lord. You see what he's saying? Thou shalt not avenge, meaning revenge, nor bear any grudge against the children of thy people. You know, some people cannot overcome things. They cannot overcome things, so they nest the evil. They nest the hatred. They nest the envy, so on and so forth. The Lord says, you in the midst of sin, you cannot avenge, nor bear any grudge against the children of your people. That's your neighbor in verse 17. You understand? He says, but thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself. I am the Lord. You see that thing? That's beautiful right there. So what are we, what, what is, what is the, what, what is the, the Lord teaching us here in Sarak? The love of neighbor comes from what? It comes from us not suffering sin upon each other. That's the love of neighbors. Because in the world right now, 
the 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 only the, the 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 reason why you see there's so much evil in the black community in our nation is because we moving on the spirit of you can't judge me you can't tell me what to do you understand oh don't judge me don't tell me what to do that's the spirit that's moving in the black in our nation today that's why you see there's so much evil there's a lot of what gang rapes there's a lot of rape in the community murder killing you understand Young girls being kidnapped. You understand? Young men killing their fathers and their mothers. Young daughters punching their, their mothers in the face. That's what you are seeing today. You understand? A lot of drug dealing, prostitution. Why? Because we're moving in that spirit. or on judgment. Because of lack of judgment, that's why you see we are destroyed as a nation like this. Okay? Now go back to Sarah. 25 and 1. The book of Ecclesiastes, chapter 25, verse 1. In Wait. three things, I was beautified and sort of beautiful, both before God and men. Mm -hmm. The unity of brethren, Wait. the love of neighbors, mm -hmm. a man and a wife that agree together. That goes into the last pillar, okay? It goes into the last pillar. But what I want to show you here is the unity of the brethren is one of the things that beautify the Lord. They're one of the things that glorify the Father. The love of neighbors, you understand? When we apply the royal law amongst each other, knowing how to deal one with another, you understand? Because remember, the first pillar is that you must get your mind right. Make sure your spiritual life is healthy. You understand? You study, you apply, you follow counsel. You understand? You keep yourself in the love of the law. You build yourself up, okay? You're always abiding in the work of the Mosaic. So that's how you make sure your spirit is correct. Then... You get your health in order because just as your spirit needs the laws of God, your body needs good health and diet, okay? So once you come among the brethren, when you start to socialize with the brethren, meaning what? We, we, go, for, we go to camp. We come together as a congregation. We observe the hype, the feast days and so forth. You know how to work well and interact with your brothers and sisters because your mind is right. You see that thing right there? Now watch this. Give me 2 Chronicles chapter 13, verse 1. 2 Chronicles chapter 13, verse 1. Let's get there. Second book of Chronicles chapter 13, verse 1. Read. Really? Now, in the 18th year of King Jeroboam, began Abijah to reign over Judah. So now, in the 13th year of Jeroboam, it says, Abiah began to reign over Judah. Now is Abiah's turn to rule. Go ahead. He reigned three years in Jerusalem. Mm -hmm. His mother's name also was Micaiah, the daughter of Uriel of Kibir. Right. And there was war between Abiah and Jeroboam. So there was war between Abiah and Jeroboam. Remember, Jeroboam was ruling over what? Northern Kingdom. And Abiah was over Judah, southern kingdom. So there was a war between us. So that means we did not apply the royal law. We didn't get a law. Okay, go ahead. And Abiah set the battle in array with an army of valiant men of war. Right. Even 400,000 chosen men. Come on. Jeroboam also set the battle in array against him with 800,000 chosen men being mighty men of valor. So now what you are seeing here, they remember this is after the split, okay? This is after the split. Solomon is dead and gone at this point. You understand? So now, now we're going to war one with another, okay? Northern Kingdom with 800,000 and chosen men, mighty men of valor. And then you've got Southern Kingdom of 400,000 because Northern Kingdom always outnumbers us. Okay, go ahead. And Abiah stood up upon Mount Zemarim, which is in Mount Ephraim, and said, Hear me, thou Jeroboam, and all Israel. So now Abiah, what is Abiah doing? Abiah wants to make sure that there's peace. Say, so listen, hear me. So he's talking to who? He's talking to Ephraim. Okay, go ahead. Ought ye not to know that the Lord God of Israel gave the kingdom over Israel to David forever, mm -hmm. even to him and his sons by a covenant of salt. You see that thing? 
It says, don't you know that the Lord God of Israel gave the kingdom over, over the kingdom over Israel to David forever? Meaning what? Southern kingdom will always be the one that will be taking the lead. That's what he's saying right there. You understand? Even to him and to his sons by a covenant of salt. Because remember, salt is a what? Salt is a preservative. You understand? So he's saying, listen, we must have the covenant of salt. That's what he's reminding him of the covenant going back all the way back to our forefather Abraham. Now watch this. Give me Mark 9. Because Christ spoke about this thing. Mark 9, chapter, Mark chapter 9, verse 49. Read that. Mark 9, verse 49. The book of Mark, chapter 9, verses 49. Read. For everyone shall be salted with fire. Mm -hmm. And every sacrifice shall be salted with salt. You see what he's saying? Everyone shall be salted with fire. And every sacrifice shall be salted with salt. The fire goes into God's laws. You understand? The salt is the savor. It's a preservative. It's what brings us together. The laws of God. Okay, come on. Salt is good, mm -hmm. but if the salt have lost its saltness, wherewith will you season it? Right. Have salt in yourselves and have peace one with another. You see what he's saying? He says, have salt in yourselves and have peace one with another. So the only way we're going to have peace one with another is through the covenant of salt, because salt is a preservative. What is the salt? The laws of God. The God's commandments is how we're going to have peace one with another. That's when we're going to have the unity of brethren. You're going to be able to know how to deal with your brothers and sisters when we come together. Because during the time of Chronicles, you can see they didn't know how to deal with one another. That's why Abaya was like, listen up. We need to stop this foolishness. You understand? Because we have the covenant of salt that was given to us. So now Christ reminded us of the same thing that we just read in Chronicles, which today is one of the biggest problems in Israel. That's why even in Israel, they still know what? Brothers and sisters, I'm not talking about different camps coming together. Mm -mm, I'm not talking about that. I'm talking about within the camp itself, you find that there's divisions within a specific camp. So the Lord says, no, we must move like that. In each camp, Whatever the organizational name that you've got, there must be unity within that camp. That's what the Lord is saying right there. Okay? Now watch this. Give me the book of Ecclesiastes chapter 4. Okay? Give me Ecclesiastes 4 verse 7. Because a lot of the times is that you notice that if your spirit is not right, you're not going to be able to deal with the, the brothers and sisters in the congregation when we come together as a congregation. You won't be able to deal with your brother. You won't be able to deal with your sister according to the scripture. You understand? You ever seen when we come together, there's always this one brother. He's always with the sister. What the hell is this? Why? Because you can't deal with the weak. You can't be with the men when we're discussing world domination. You understand? You're always in the sister's face. Mm -mm. No. Something wrong. Okay? Now watch this. Ecclesiastes 4 verse 7. We were what you got. The book of Ecclesiastes, chapter 4, verse 7. Go ahead. They, then I returned, mm -hmm. and I saw vanity under the sun. Come on. There is one alone, and there is not a second. Really? Yea, he had neither child nor brother. Yet is there no end of all his labor. Neither is his eye satisfied with riches. Come on. Neither saith he, for whom do I labor and bereave my soul of good? There is also vanity. This is also vanity. Yea, it is a sore travail. So now King Solomon is speaking here. You understand? The reason why I'm bringing this up is because when your spirit is not right, your health is not in order because the food you eat the lack of exercise, unhealthy eating habits and so forth, guess what? Your spirit is not going to be right. Your spirit is not right. That's why you, you don't eat correctly to take care of yourself. You understand? So when you come among the brethren, you don't know how to relate. You don't know, you don't understand the unity. Unity, it aggravates you. You 
You understand? So the Lord put this in the scriptures so that those of us, those of us that you find yourself, you are moving in the spirit, you want to separate yourself, you cannot deal well with your neighbor, you don't know how to interact with your brothers and sisters. That's why this is written right here to rebuke the wicked Negro who always want to separate himself. Read that thing again, verse 8. The book of Ecclesiastes, chapter 4, verse 8. Read. There is one alone, mm -hmm. and there is not a second. Yea, he had neither child nor brother, yet is there no end of all his labor. Stop right neither. There. You see what it says? It says there is one alone, and there is not a second. Meaning what? There's, he's, just, he's just by himself. You understand? There's nobody else that can help him or do what? He doesn't have anybody to what? To check him. He does not have anybody to interact with according to the scriptures. You understand? So we can build together, work well together. You understand? Read. Neither, neither is his eye satisfied with riches. Neither saith he, for whom do I labor and bereave my soul of good? This is also vanity. Yea, it is a sort of veil. So what we're reading here, it says, this one that is always by himself, it says, neither is his eyes satisfied with riches. So what is the Lord teaching us? He's giving us an example of when you are by yourself, it's easy to fall into sin because this one is greed. You understand? He's greedy. That's why it says, neither is his eyes satisfied with riches. You, are, you see that thing right there? Watch this. Give me Sirach 31 verse 1. Sirach 31 verse 1. So when he's by himself, who's going to check him of this sin? Nobody. So when you come together with the brothers and sisters, if you have the spirit of covetousness, you, you understand? Your mouth. You don't know how to deal well. You don't know how to, to speak with your brother and sister. You don't know how to behave yourself and so on and so forth. Guess what? When we come among the brethren, we're going to pick that thing up. It's a bra. You need to fix that. Sis, you need to fix that. But when you're by yourself, it's easy to fall into sin. Read that. Sirach 31 verse 1. The book of Ecclesiastes chapter 31 verse 1. Come on. Watching for riches consumeth the flesh. Mm -hmm. And the care thereof driveth away sleep. You see what the Bible is saying? Watching for riches means caring for riches Meaning that's all you're about, riches. It says, watching for riches consume the flesh. It's going to get you death because you have to overwork yourself to get those riches. By the time you're supposed to enjoy them, guess what? There's no more life in you. You're unhealthy because you have not been taking care of yourself because your spirit is not right. That's why he says, and the care thereof driveth away sleep. Jump down to verse 6. Read. Cold hath been the ruin of many. Mm -hmm. and the destruction was present. You see what the Bible is saying? God has destroyed many because that's what they go after. That's what they are about. Get that in Sirach 38. Okay? Now, Sirach 34. Let me see. Yep, Sirach 38 and verse 34. Read that. Sirach 38 verse 34. Watch this thing right here. Come on. The book of Ecclesiastes, chapter 8, verse 34. Come on. But they will maintain the state of the world. Mm -hmm. And all their desire is in the work of their craft. You see that? He says, but they will maintain the state of the world. Meaning their entire existence, the motive of their existence is to maintain the state of the world as we live right now. He says, and all their desire is in the work of their craft. They trust, they trust in themselves and there's the riches that they quote unquote got. They trust in that. You understand? That's why they will they will make sure that the, the Babylon the Great is up and running. They make sure of that. You understand? Because that's where their focus is on. Their focus is not on the nation of Israel. Okay, it's about to enrich themselves. So go back to Sarah 31, verse 6 again. The book of Ecclesiasticus, chapter 31, verse 6. Read. Gold had been the ruin of many, and their destruction was present. I need you to put power in your reading. Come on. The book of Ecclesiasticus, chapter 31, verse 6. Read. Gold 
has been the ruin of many, and their destruction was present. Wait. It is the stumbling block unto them that is sacrificed unto it. And every fool shall be taken there with. You see what the, the Bible says, the it is the gold in verse six. That is a stumbling block to them that sacrifice unto it, because that's what they worship. The love of money. They worship money. Money is their God. It says, and every fool shall be taken there with. They are going to be taken by the gold that they worship. They worship money and the riches, then the goods that, and I get it, and, and being able to get access to the things that it buys. That's what they worship. You understand? That's what the Lord is saying right there. So when you have that spirit and your mind is not right, when you come among the brethren, even with small things, we're going to pick up that this brother has a covetous spirit on him. You understand? He's gluttonous. He's this. You understand? That means he don't sleep well. He doesn't eat well. He doesn't love himself. He hates himself. That's why he eat like this. You understand? Those type of things. Okay? That means he's, un in a, he's, un he's unhealthy. So the, the same goes for the sisters as well. You understand? That's why it's important when to come for us to come together as a congregation as we do. Okay? Now go back to Ecclesiastes chapter 3, verse 9. I mean, Ecclesiastes 4, verse 9. Read that. The book of Ecclesiastes, chapter 4, verse 9. Come on. Two are better than one mm -hmm. because they have a good reward for their labor. You see what the Bible is saying? Two are better than one. Because remember in verse, in verse, in verse uh, 8, the King Solomon is explaining that it's not a good idea to be by yourself. Verse 9 says, it says what? Is this two are better than one because they have a good reward for their labor. Why? Give me that in Proverbs 27, verse 17. This goes back to unity, the love of neighbors, the unity of the brethren. Get that in Proverbs 27, verse 17. Proverbs 27, verse 17. Come on. The book of Proverbs, chapter 27, verse 17. Read. Iron sharpeneth iron. Mm -hmm. So a man sharpeneth the countenance of his friend. You see that? Fix your meaning, fix your face, get your spirit together. You understand? You can't be walking around with a long face because brothers are going to see you. What's wrong with the brother? Sisters are going to see you. Hey, what's wrong with the sister? Okay. He says, iron sharpeneth iron. So a man sharpeneth the countenance of his friend because you find friends in the truth. You understand? So the Lord is telling you, when we come together, Iron sharpens iron because why? When we come together, you are able to see things that you can see through the people that are around you. There's something wrong with the way you, you move. Something is wrong with the way you make decisions. So on and so forth. And if you're a spiritual man or woman, you'll begin to sit down and examine and re rectify that thing. You understand? Now, go back to Ecclesiastes 4. Okay. Read verse 9 again. The book of Ecclesiastes, chapter 4, verse 9. Wait. Two are better than one. Mm -hmm. Because they have a good reward for their labor. Because they have a good reward for their labor. So the reward that we're going to get as we're laboring in this truth is the kingdom of heaven that shall be established upon the earth. For that to happen, we must know how to work well together. You understand? And in order for us to work well together, we must what? We must be on one accord. What brings us together is God's laws. Okay, get that in Ephesians 4 verse 3. What brings us together is the laws of the Most High. Okay, God's commandments is what will bring us together as one. Read that. Come on, Ephesians 4 verse 3. Read. The book of Ephesians chapter 4 verse 3. Come on. Endeavoring to keep the unity of the spirit in the bond of peace. Now that's beautiful right there. To endeavor means to what? You must go, you must, you must make an extra effort to keep the unity of the spirit in the bond of peace. Because we was given the covenant of salt. You understand? Have peace one with another. So we must endeavor to keep the unity. That word right there is foreign to our people this day. Even in Israel, it's still a foreign concept. Unity. The spirit says, unity of the spirit in the bond of peace. 
You understand? We must have peace one with another. Why? Because we apply God's laws, the royal law, the moral and the civil laws, because that's where Israel stumbles. Okay, give me Acts 2 verse 1. Acts chapter 2 verse 1. The book of Acts chapter 2 verse 1. Really? And suddenly there came a sound from heaven as no, no. of Acts, Acts 2 verse 1. Acts 2 verse 1. Pay attention. The book of Acts chapter 2 verse 1. Excuse me, sir. The book of Acts chapter 2 verse 1. And when the day of Pentecost was fully come, they were all with one accord in one place. You see that? So, because Pentecost is a feast day, you understand? The feast of first fruits. So he's saying, when the feast of, when the day of Pentecost, the day of Pentecost was fully come, he says they were all with one accord in one place. That thing right there, nobody was, was believing in Buddha, you understand? You have another believing in white Jesus, you had, you had another one that says, no, I'm an Egyptologist, no. We, we were all in one accord in one place. Because of what? Because God's laws is what brought us to, is, is what brought us together. That's what we need to understand. The laws of God is what will bring Israel together. That's why our four parents, they were all together in one mind, one spirit, one judgment. There was no division among them. Okay. Now watch this. Go back to Ecclesiastes. Okay, chapter 4, read verse 10. Ecclesiastes 4 and verse 10. Let's read them. Come on. The book of Ecclesiastes, chapter 4, verse 10. Come on. For if they fall, mm -hmm. no one will lift up his fellow. Read. But woe to him that is alone when he falleth. Come on. For he, for he hath not another to help him up. You see that thing? Because if you are by yourself, if you fall, it's a wreck. The Lord says, if the two, if two, he says two is better than one. Because if they fall, one will what? One will help his fellow. With the one will strengthen his neighbor, his brother, his uh, sister, so on and so forth. So what the Lord is teaching us here says, that's why your social life must be on point. You must know how to socialize with your brothers and sisters. And the most that God gave us laws on how to do that. You understand? The most that God has given us laws on how to deal one with another. Okay? Now watch this. I'm going to give an example of that. Give me that in First Maccabees because it says, if, if, if one fall, it says, what for he that, for he hath not another to help him up. But, but here it says, for if they fall, one will help, one will lift up his fellow. Okay? So I'm going to give an example of what happened during the time of the Greeks. Okay? Watch this. Get that in uh, First Maccabees, okay, chapter three. This is after our forefather Marathias had died, okay. Now he's commanding his sons on what needs to happen next. You know, watch this. Um, read First Maccabees two, First Maccabees chapter two, verse forty-nine. Watch this. First Maccabees chapter two, verse forty-nine. Go ahead. Now, when the time drew near that Marathias should die. He said unto his sons, Now hath pride and rebuke gotten strength, and the time of destruction and the wrath of indignation. So now Marathias is strengthening his sons because he says, Listen, I'm about to die. So now I'm preparing you for what you must do after I'm gone. Okay, go ahead. Now, therefore, my sons, be ye zealous for the law and mm -hmm. give your lives for the covenant of your fathers. You see what he's saying? He says, be zealous for the law and give your lives for the covenant of your fathers. So he's giving them focus. He says, don't lose focus now. Now that I'm going to, now that I'm about to die. You understand? He says, don't lose focus. He says, be zealous for the law. Meaning stand up for the laws of God. Defend the gospel and give your lives for the covenant of your fathers. Because during this time, there was actual physical war. Yes, they were defending the gospel. Yes, they were defending the laws of our, for, of, of our forefathers, but there was actual physical war that was going on during this time. You understand? You, you see bodies dropping. You see hairs being chopped off. 
You understand? The Greeks destroying us, killing our sons and our daughters, our mothers and so forth, our families. You understand? Right? The reason why you see brothers right now, you're so complacent. You understand? You're given counsel, bro. We need you to do X, Y, and Z. You'll be dragging your feet. It's because you don't see bodies dropping dead left, right, and center. You understand? You don't want to fix things with your brother because you don't see bodies dropping dead. You understand that? That's why when you're supposed to fix things with your brother, you just be dragging your feet. You don't understand that we are at war. Wake the hell up, black man. Understand that, sisters as well. Okay, read that thing again, verse 50. First Maccabees, chapter 2, verse 50. Read. Now, therefore, my sons, be mm. zealous for the law and Mom. give your lives for the covenant of your fathers. You see what he's saying? Give your lives for the covenant of your fathers because that's exactly what they did. During this time, there was actual physical war that was going on. Watch this. Give me the book of Isaiah, chapter 9. Okay. Isaiah chapter 9, read Isaiah 9 and verse 5. This is the type of war that was going on during the time of the Maccabees. Okay, read that. Watch this thing right here. Come on. Read Isaiah 9 verse 5. Read, come on. Shalom, sir. Yes, Isaiah chapter 9 verse 5. Read. For every battle of the warrior is with confused noise mm -hmm. and garments rolled in blood. But this shall be with burning and fuel of fire. But now Isaiah is saying, listen, every battle of the warrior is with confused noise and garments rolled in blood. Because guess what was going on? They'd be putting helmets on. You know what? You put an armor, the armor, when you go to war. You put your helmet on, you put your breastplate and so forth, you cover your, your elbows, your knees and so forth, and you get a sword, guess what? You're going to war. Hand-to-hand -hand combat, you understand? And with swords, you understand? They chop in your, your cheek, they chop your head off, you understand? They slay you with a sword, you're bleeding inside your armor. That's the type of war that is going on here, okay? Where you hear the sound of the of the, the cut wheels of that have been pulled, that are the cut wheels, the cut that is being pulled by horses. You understand? That's the type of war that Isaiah is explaining here. Okay. So, but he's separating the type of war that happened back then and the type of war that is going to happen in these last days. It says, shall be with burning and fuel of fire. Okay. I'm just trying to show you what was going on during that time. Okay. Get that in the book of Nahum. Okay, Nahum chapter 3. Watch this. The reason why you see it's so easy for you to think, no, this is a game. This is no game going on. We are at war. Watch this. Give me that in Nahum chapter 3. Okay, Nahum chapter 3 and verse 2. Watch this. Nahum chapter 3 verse 2. Go ahead. The noise of a whip mm. and the noise of the rattling of the wheels Ray. And of the prancing horses and of the jumping chariots. You see, you see that right there? Is it the noise of a whip, the noise of the rattling of the wheels of a car that has been pulled by horses, and of the prancing horses and of the jumping chariots. What's going on during that time? War. The type of war that Isaiah is explaining. Obviously, Nahum here is prophesying about Babylon the Great. But I want to show you here what's going on here is the type of war that we was the, our forefathers fought during the time of the Greeks. It was this type of war with horses and chariots and so forth, swords. You understand? Carcasses of bodies all over the place. The reason why you see brothers don't have the sense of agency is because you don't see that right now going on. But that time will come. You understand? The most that God is sprinkled some fear and says, okay. I'm going to allow this corona thing to do some havoc on this earth. Negroes are still not waking up. Brothers still dragging their feet. We are at war. You better find yourself on the right of the on, on the right side of this thing. Okay? Now watch this. Now go back. First Maccabees 2. First Maccabees chapter 2. Read verse 50 again. First Maccabees chapter 2 verse 50. 
Rain. Now therefore, my sons, be ye zealous for the law and give your lives for the covenant of your fathers. Rain. Call to remembrance what acts our fathers did in their time. Mm -hmm. So shall ye receive great honor and an everlasting name. Because an, a name is a, a good name is 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 is, is what? Is as a good name. Let's get there. We must get it because right now as a nation, we don't have a good name. We have an ill name. That's why we need to fix that. That's why even individually and as a nation, we must fix that thing. Okay. So if you don't know how to deal with your brother and sister, you cannot socialize. Guess what? It means something wrong. You have an ill name. You have a bad and ill reputation in Israel. I cannot fix that for you. You must do that thing for yourself. Okay, get that, Ecclesiastes. Okay, Ecclesiastes chapter 7, verse 1. Read that. Ecclesiastes chapter 7, verse 1. Read. A good name is better than precious ointment. Mm -hmm. And the day of death than the day of one's birth. You see that a good name is better than precious ointment. You must have a good name. So when we fight the battle of Israel with cheerfulness, we come together as a nation, the unity of the brethren, the love of neighbors. Guess what? We are beautifying the most High God. Guess what? The Lord will give us a good name because the Lord gave us a good name. We messed that name up. Now it's time to return back to the Father and humble ourselves so the Lord have mercy upon us. Okay? Now, watch this. Um... At this point in Maccabees, Marathias is about to die. So he's instructing his sons of what they need to do, meaning continue the mission, right? Watch this. Now jump down to verse 68. First Maccabees 2, verse 68. Read that. First Maccabees chapter 2, verse 68. Mm -hmm. You know what? Recompense fully the heathen. Hold on. Wait. Watch this. Watch this. Read verse 65. I want to show you something. Okay. First Maccabees chapter 2, verse 65. Read. Really? And behold, I know that your brother Simon is a man of counsel. Mm -hmm. Give ear unto him always. He shall be a father unto you. So now, forefather Simon was a man of counsel. He was a wise man. So it says, so Marathias, because he knows his sons. So now he's, he's giving them charge of who's going to be responsible for what. You understand? So Simon is a man of counsel. He shall be a father unto you. Next verse. Go ahead. As for Judas Maccabees, he has been mighty and strong, even from his youth up. Mm -hmm. Let him be your captain and fight the battle of the people. So now you see what's going on here? What's happening here is that when Marathias said to Simon, okay, you are the counsel, you're the one that is, you, you the brains. You understand? Verse 66 says, Judah Maccabee, it says, he be mighty and strong even from his youth up. Let him be your captain. Now watch this. Nobody, Maratha, mm, Judah Maccabee didn't say, mm -mm, I want to be the, I want to be the counselor. I, I, I want to be the father. So, neither did Simon say, mm -mm, I want to be the captain. You, there was no envy or emulation among them. Why? Because they were moving in the right spirit. There was, there was war. There was no time for bickering and BS. There was no time for complaining. There was no time for none of that stuff. The reason why you see there's murmuring and complaining this day in Israel, in the camp, is because you don't move, we're not moving in that spirit that we see here today, when our people was dropping dead. And you had no choice but to get along with your brother because we must go to war. You understand? That's what's going on right here. Now jump down to verse 17 now. Okay, you know what? No, verse 69. First Maccabees chapter 2, verse 69. Come on. So he blessed them and was gathered to his fathers. So Marathias died. Okay, come on. And he died in the 140 and sixth year, and his mm. sons buried him in the sepulchres of his fathers at Modin. And all Israel made great, great lamentation for him. Because it's according to the law. Now jump down to chapter 3, verse 1. Now Marathias, the father is calling back home. Watch what happens next. Okay, come on. Chapter 3, verse 1. Read. First Maccabees, chapter 3, verse 1. Then his son, Judas, called Maccabees, rose up in his stead. 
now because he's, ra he's raising he's rising up in his stead now go ahead and all his brethren helped him and all his brethren and, did what and all his brethren helped him and all his brethren helped him all his brethren helped him remember don't forget the thought now go back to ecclesiastes okay go back to ecclesiastes chapter 4 verse 10 again so we understand this thing okay read Ecclesiastes chapter 4, verse 10. Read. For if they fall, the one will lift up his fellow. You see that? For if they fall, for one will lift up his fellow. Remember, Marathias died. He gave his sons charge to say, continue the mission. Guess what? When he died, these sons, they continued the mission. That's why it says, read that part again, verse 10. Ecclesiastes chapter 4, verse 10. Mm -hmm. For if they fall, the one will lift up his fellow. You see that? For if they fall, the one will lift up his fellow. That's what we see here in the book of the Maccabees. Go back to First Maccabees 3, verse 2 again. Okay, come on. First Maccabees chapter 3, verse 2. Mm -hmm. And all his brethren helped him, and so did all they that held with his father. And mm. they fought in cheerfulness the battle of Israel. You see what happened? He says, all his brethren helped him. Not only that, and so did all they that helped with his father. Meaning those that went to war with, with his father, Marathias, they also helped. So there was unity because guess what? Our nation was on the line. You understand? It was a matter of life and death. So it is today. Some of you don't see that yet, but that's exactly, that's the times we're living in. And to, in today's time, it's more dangerous than it was back then because now, Guess what? It's not in your face. It's a spiritual war. You understand? Look at these viruses that are being launched. You can't see it. You can't smell it. You don't know where it's coming from. You understand? That's why they were able to come together because there was war on every side. They had to come together in order for them to defend the 12 tribes of Israel. Unity. There's power in that thing. Ray. First Maccabees, chapter 3, verse 3. Come on. So he gave his people great honor and mm -hmm. put on a breastplate as a giant. Right. And get his warlike harness about him, and he made battles protecting the host with his sword. You see that? He made the host protecting, he says what? Protecting, he made battles again with the Greeks, against the Greeks, protecting the host with his sword. Remember, the nation of Israel, we are the we are God's army. Okay. So they fought with cheerfulness, but the reason why they were able to overcome, the Lord was with them. Number one. Two, there was unity among them. You understand? There was no time for shaking and jiving. Mm -mm. There was no time for that. So right now we are almost at the end of this day. There's no time to sleep. You better get your mind right. Understand? You can't be sleeping up in here. We are at war. You understand? We are at war. Look at what's, what, what was happening in the earth. There's a lot that's going on in the earth. So don't sleep. Now watch this. Go back to where he was at now. Ecclesiastes 4 now. Again. Ecclesiastes 4 verse 11. Great. Ecclesiastes chapter 4 verse 11. Come on. Okay. If two lie together, then they have heat. Mm -hmm. But how can one be warm alone? You see that? If two lie together, then they have heat. So basically, he's giving you another example in case you didn't understand where, where, where everything that we've been reading. Now he's saying, listen, if again, another example, if two lie together, then they have heat. But how can one be warm alone? You see that thing? So the Lord keeps giving us these different examples. Why? Because we must what we must be there for one one for another. You must be your brother's keeper. You must be your sister's keeper. That's the law. You understand? Right. And if one prevail against him, two shall shall withstand him. And the threefold cord is not quickly broken. You see what he's saying now? Now he's adding the third one. He says, if one prevail against him, two shall withstand him. And a threefold cord is not quickly broken. Now it's the three of you now. It's more than two. 
Now the strength is getting, you're, you're getting stronger and stronger as a nation when you come together. That's what he's saying right there. You understand? And that's what I need you men and women to understand. We are at war. Okay, and because we are at war, we are commanded to come together by the word of the Holy One. That's how we are going to be able to overcome and we're not going to be easily overcome. Our cause, meaning our unity, is not going to be easily broken. You brothers and sisters understand that? Yes, sir. All praises to the most high. Now, watch this. Now, give me, give me the book of Sirach, okay? Give me Ecclesiasticus, um, chapter, give me Sirach 23. Because understand, when you are by yourself, you separate yourself. We come together as a congregation. You, there's always this one brother. He's always by himself. He's the quiet one. He don't say much. Hmm? Something wrong with you. Okay? The brother don't say nothing. Or if he does say, he just says a few things and then he's quiet the whole time. Something wrong. You come together with your brethren, but you don't have the covenant of salt. Okay? Watch this. You know what? Before we get there, get Jude verse 17. Get there in Jude verse 17. Because the apostle Jude, he explained this thing right here. Watch this. Come on. Jude verse 17. Great. Right. But beloved, remember ye the words which were spoken before of the apostles of our Lord Jesus Christ. So now this was a recurring message that was what was being taught by the apostles to the disciples and the followers of Christ and those that followed the apostles after Christ left. Right? How that they told you there should be mockers in the last time who should walk after their own ungodly lust. You see what the problem is? Lust. And they're letting you know that they are willful, they are self-willed because it says who should walk after their own ungodly lusts. In the last time is making reference to the last days, okay? They're gonna walk after their own ungodly lusts, plural. So meaning there's multiple lusts that they are in the midst of. Go ahead. These be they who separate themselves, mm -hmm. sensual, having not the spirit. You see that? So those that will walk after their own ungodly lusts, they are mockers. They mock what the Bible says, they mock the men and women that apply what is written in this book. They laugh at us. You understand? They make fun of us. They speak evil of us. Even within, the, within, you always have that Negro who does not like to fall in line. You understand? He doesn't see, he, he, he does not understand you, the, the fact that we must dress in a certain way. You don't understand that you must carry yourself in a certain way. Comb your hair. You understand? Iron your clothes brush your shoes, you understand? All of them, grease your hair. You don't get that. You understand? Because as a nation, we have been conditioned to what? To destroy from within. Understand? So read verse 19 again. Come on. The book of Jude, verse 19. Mm -hmm. These be they who separate themselves, sensual, having not the spirit, you see that? He said they separate themselves and they are sensual, having not the spirit. The reason why they don't have the spirit is because they walk after their own ungodly lusts. So they are more interested in fulfilling the lust of their flesh rather than what? Rather than walk in the spirit. That's their goal. That's their objective. You understand? So that's why they're not going to be able to do what? To help build the nation. They're not going to endeavor to keep the unity of the spirit in the bond of peace. They're always going to be causing confusion all the time. And when they get checked, here's what I've given. Here's what happens. Give me that in Sarah 23 verse 1. Ecclesiasticus chapter 23 verse 1. Because when we come together, we have feasts. You understand? We come together. We go to movies. We have a movie, whatever that we have and so forth. These type of things is what? This is to build up the unity. That's why the Lord gave us these feast days to come together, to feast, to enjoy ourselves. You understand? The Sabbath, okay? The classes that we have weekly. All of that contributes to what? The unity of the brethren. 
how we beautify the Lord this day. Sirach 23, read it. Ecclesiastes chapter 23, verse 1. Read. O Lord, Father and Governor of all my whole life, leave me not to their counsels and let me not fall by them. Okay, meaning don't leave me to my own counsel. Read. Who will set scourges over my thoughts and mm -hmm. the discipline of wisdom over my heart? You see that? He says, who's going to do that? Who's going to set scourges over my thoughts and the discipline of wisdom over my heart, meaning my spirit, my mind? Who's going to do that? The brothers and sisters around you, because when they see you going off, they're going to check you. Brother, come back, because we're trying to get to the kingdom. Says, get your mind right. You're not supposed to be doing that. You're not supposed to be saying stuff like that. So on and so forth. Read on. That they spare me not for my ignorances. You see and that? it pass see, not. Hold on. He says that they spare me not for my ignorances. We're not supposed to spare you. That's what the Lord is saying. That's the prayer. He says that they spare me not for my ignorances. Meaning ignorance of what? God's laws. Read. That they spare me not for my ignorances and it pass not by my sins. You see that thing right there? Because when you are in the midst of sin, you are in the midst of ignorances. And that ignorance you think is peace. When you're amongst the brethren, they're going to see it. They're going to say, you know what? You can't be moving like that. This is what the scripture says. Apply this. You can't be doing that. Okay? Read. Let my ignorances increase and my sins about to my destruction. And I fall before my adversaries and my enemy rejoice over me whose hope is far from thy mercy. You see what it is? says, lest my ignorance is increased. Because if nobody is checking you, if you don't come together with the brethren, you, listen, you're not going to see how your spirit is until you come together with the brethren. That's why many of our people, they meet us on the streets. They are, they are happy with the laws of God coming out. When we say, listen, we have classes during the week. We have long classes where we deal with different things. You must come to, we, we, you must come and attend, come to, come to the school, come to class, attend the class, and so forth, get your mind right. That's where the problem comes in. You understand? That's where the problem comes in. So they, they are okay with their ignorance is increasing, meaning sins, and my sins are bound to my destruction because they're going to die in their sins. That's what the Lord is saying right there. And I fall before my adversaries and my enemy rejoice over me, whose hope is far from thy mess. So to prevent all this, the Lord says what? Gather yourself together with the brethren. Because that's how you glorify me on earth. Okay? Watch this. Give me the book of Proverbs. Okay? Give me Proverbs 17. Because a lot of the times when you see brothers and sisters, when we come together, you understand? There's just this one brother. He don't say nothing. Or he, like I mentioned it before, he don't say nothing. Something wrong. You're supposed to be glad to see your brothers and sisters. You understand? I'll give you an example, right? Watch this. Give me the book of Exodus, okay? Because the Mosai, he told, he told Moses about this thing. Get Exodus chapter 4. Um, get Exodus chapter 4 and verse... Start at verse... Start at verse 14. Because at this point... Um, Moses was, was making excuses. Okay, watch this. Exodus 4, 14. Read that. Exodus chapter 4, verse 14. And the anger of the Lord was kindled against Moses. And he said, Is not Aaron the Levite thy brother? I know that he can speak well. And also, behold, he cometh forth to meet thee. And when he seeth thee, he will be glad in his heart. You see that? Because he has not seen Moses in 40 years. So the Lord is saying, listen, I know um, he says, your brother um, your brother Aaron, he says, he's coming to meet thee. He says, I know he will be glad in his heart when he sees you. You see what the Lord is saying? So when we come together, you must have that spirit of joy to see your brother. The spirit of joy to see your sister. You see that thing right there? Don't be thinking nothing evil. 
because brothers be lusting after sisters and vice versa. What the hell is this? When we come together, you, all, we already, you already have that spirit, you have already have that worldly spirit, that lust that you've got in your head. Committing adultery against your sister, committing adultery against your brother. You understand? You're no longer thinking about, you know, we coming together, the spirit of gladness and so forth, we rejoicing in the Lord. You're not thinking about that because your spirit ain't right. Okay? Now watch this. Give me Proverbs 17, 22. Proverbs chapter 17, verse 22. Pray. A merry heart doeth good like a medicine, mm -hmm. but a broken spirit dryeth the bones. You see that? A merry heart doeth good like a medicine. Joy, the spirit of joy. You must have that thing. Okay? You must have the spirit of joy. Because that's a commandment to have the spirit of joy. I hope you brothers and sisters understand that. Joy is a commandment. You see that thing? Watch this. Give me, give me the book of Psalms. Give me the book of Psalms. Here's what the Lord said this thing. Here's what the Lord said to you, David. Watch this thing right here. Psalms 149. Okay. Psalms 149 verse 1. Watch this. Psalm chapter 149, verse 1. Come on. Praise ye the Lord. Mm -hmm. Sing unto the Lord a new song and his praise in the congregation of saints. So you see that part right there is a sing unto the Lord a new song. When you're singing, I mean, you have the spirit of joy. You can't be singing and you're all sad and all. Mm -mm. It says, Praise ye the Lord. Sing unto the Lord a new song. Okay, and his praise in the congregation of saints. We are the congregation of saints. Okay, next verse. Go ahead, watch this. Let Israel rejoice in him that made him. Mm -hmm. Let the children of Zion be joyful in their king. That's a commandment right there. He says, let Israel rejoice in him that made him. Let the children of Zion be joyful in their king. The reason why you see like December, you understand? Our people are all jolly and all that. They don't rejoice in the Lord that made them. They are not joyful. They are not joyful in, the, in their king. No. They celebrate their oppressor. They celebrate their oppression. That's what you need to understand. Okay? Read on. Let them praise his name in the dance. Mm. Let them sing praises unto him with the timbrel and harp. You see that thing right there? Let them praise his name in the dance. You can't be dancing, yet you are sad. You've got a long face. How does that work? You understand? Because joy is a gift. Understand that. The spirit of joy is a gift. You ever notice? Brothers that come into the truth, they always, you know, they have a long face. You ask a brother, hey, what's going on? Are you all right? Yes, say I'm fine. But I can see you're not fine. But I'm not going to ask you again because you want to be the center of attention. My point is this. In the world, listen, if you see the brother in the world when they were in the world, you don't even know if they are right. While they are still in Israel, the way when they are not among us, you don't know how they behave. But listen, you even see their jaw. You know that teeth that is at the bottom? You will see that in the world. In Israel, they just be walking around like a ragamuffin. Okay. They don't laugh. They don't do nothing. Read on. Verse 5. Come on. Psalms chapter 149, verse 5. Come on. Let the saints be joyful in glory. Mm. Let them sing aloud upon their beds. You see that? This right here is a commandment. We must have joy. We must have the spirit of joy and gladness when it comes to serving the most high. You can't be coming, you come to class, but you're miserable. You go to camp, you're miserable. I don't know. What is wrong with you? Why? Because you're not praying to the Lord. You're not crying to the Lord to give you the spirit of joy. You understand? To keep going. Understand that thing. That's why when we come together, when we, when we be joking around, you understand, having a good laugh and so forth, 
Yes, that Negro, right? They just sit in there in the corner. Hmm? You don't love, you don't say nothing. Watch this. Give me the book of Proverbs 15, verse 13. Read that for me. Proverbs 15, verse 13. Okay. Proverbs chapter 15, verse 13. Read. A merry heart maketh a cheerful countenance. Mm -hmm. But by sorrow of the heart, the spirit is broken. You see that? A merry heart maketh a cheerful countenance. Because the way your face looks, we can tell there's something wrong. Watch this. Get that in the Ecclesiasticus, okay? Get that in Sarah. Get Sarah chapter 13, verse 25. Read that. Ecclesiasticus chapter 13, verse 25. Read. Right. The heart of a man changes his countenance. Mm -hmm. Whether it be for good or evil. You see that? And is it, hold on. The heart of a man changes his countenance. Meaning your mind will what? Your face will tell us what your state of mind is like. Whether it be good or whether it be evil. Whether you're thinking good things or whether you're thinking evil stuff. Your face will tell us. Okay, read. And a merry heart maketh a cheerful countenance. You see that? A merry heart maketh a cheerful countenance. We were supposed to be seeing the brother. It's like the brother is always smelling poop all the time. Okay, read. Verse 26, go ahead. A cheerful countenance is a token of a heart that is in prosperity. That's it right there. If, yes, if your mind if, is as a cheerful countenance is a token, meaning is a sign of a heart that is in prosperity. Read. And the finding out of parables is a wearisome labor of the mind. Okay, now that's something else that goes into something. But I want to show you here is, is as a cheerful countenance is a token of a heart that is in prosperity. Your face is a good indicator whether you are happy or you are sad. Whether you, are, you want to be here or you don't, your face will tell us. Understand that, okay? Go back to Proverbs 15, verse 13 again. Proverbs chapter 15, verse 13. Mm -hmm. A merry heart maketh a cheerful countenance. Come on. But by sorrow of the heart, the spirit is broken. By sorrow of the heart, the spirit is broken. By sorrow of the heart, the spirit is broken. Now watch this. Give me Sirach. Um, give me Ecclesiastes chapter 25. Get Sirach chapter 25, verse 17. Okay. Now watch this. I'm going to bring something out here. Watch this thing. Okay. Read that. Ecclesiastes chapter 25, verse 17. Go ahead. The wickedness of a woman changes her face mm -hmm. and darkens her countenance like set cloth. So now, watch this. This goes into the sisters now. It says the wickedness of a woman changes her face. So the level of wickedness that you have, your face will tell us too. Okay? It says, and darkeneth her countenance like set cloth. Like a demon has be, a, like a demon has jumped on you. So it even changed. You don't, your face is not glowing anymore. You see that thing? Some of you sisters know what I'm talking about. Your sisters, your, your face is not glowing anymore. Your smile is very difficult to come out. You understand? And I'm not talking about just what, I'm talking about all the sisters now. Understand? Because I've seen that. I see it when we go, when we go out. I see it when we come together. I can see something wrong with the sister's spirit. What's going on? You understand? She no longer have that cherry, that that uh, merry heart anymore. Her spirit is broken. What the hell is going on? You understand? Read that thing again. Ecclesiastes chapter 25, verse 17. Read. The wickedness of a woman changes her face mm -hmm. and darkens her countenance like set cloth. You see that thing right there? So guess what? We need to understand. Sisters, you need to examine yourself as well. And brothers, you need to examine yourselves. Understand that. 
So when we that's what when we could remember the first pillar is you must get your spirit right, then your health, then your social life. You're gonna see if your mind is right. You're gonna see if your health is right when you come together with your brothers and sisters. That's when you're gonna pick things up. That that brother is not applying himself. That sister is not applying himself. You understand? Uh, she's not applying herself. You see that sister right there, she's applying herself. You can see there's changes going on. That brother right there, he's now, he's cheerful all of a sudden. Lately, he's a cheerful, I see a smile. Hmm? That's a good thing, progress, okay? Because he came in like he smelled a dead dog. Now, it's like he's smelling grapes. Hmm? Why? Because the spirit of the Lord is jumping on him, he's doing something to him. He's applying himself. That's a beautiful thing right there. Give me Proverbs 12, verse 18. Proverbs chapter 12, verse 18. Read that. Proverbs chapter 12, verse 18. Read. There is that speaketh like the piercings of a sword, mm -hmm. but the tongue of the wise is health. You see that? But the tongue of the wise is health. He says, there is that speaketh like the piercing of a sword. You know what that goes into? That goes into like small things, like something small. Yeah? You just jump up like a popcorn. Mm -mm. Because when you do, the things that are going to come out of your mouth is not going to be things that are going to be building the brothers or sisters. It says, but the tongue of the wise is health. The tongue of the wise will build up a brother or a sister. You understand? That's what the Lord is saying right there. Give me Proverbs 16 verse 24. Proverbs chapter 16, verse 24. Read. Pleasant words are as in honeycomb, sweet to the soul, and mm. health to the bones. You see that? Pleasant words are as a honeycomb, sweet to the soul, and health to the bones. Now, I want to talk, I want to deal with that action. Hmm. Watch this. Give me, give me the book of Deuteronomy, okay? You know what? Hold that. Give me Proverbs 15 verse 1. I'm gonna deal. I'm gonna let me read Proverbs 15 verse 1. Then I'm gonna I'm gonna go to Detroit. Um, give me Proverbs 15 verse 1. Watch this. Proverbs chapter 15, verse 1. Mm. A soft answer turneth away wrath, but grievous words stir up anger. You see that? It says a soft answer ten turneth away wrath, but grievous words stir up anger. So what is the Lord teaching us here? Keep reading, read verse two, watch this. The tongue of the wise uses knowledge aright, mm -hmm. but the mouth of fools poureth out foolishness. Now, you see, this goes into an etiquette, your tongue, your speech. You see that thing right there? So that goes for the married brothers and sisters and the, for the unmarried ones. Now, we see that part right there says, a soft answer turneth away wrath, but grievous words stir up anger. The tongue of the wise useth knowledge correct, meaning they're not going to abuse the scriptures or, or abuse their brothers and sisters hiding behind the scripts. That's what he's saying right there. But the mouth of fools will pour out foolishness. Now, read verse 4. Watch this. Proverbs chapter 15, verse 4. A wholesome tongue is a tree of life, mm -hmm. but perverseness therein is a breach in the spirit. You see, it's a breach. It creates a what? It makes a grievous blow. There is a huge breach in the spirit, meaning what? There's a spiritual hang up in there. Okay? It says, a wholesome tongue is a tree of life, but perverseness therein is a breach in the spirit. This, then the spirit gets broken because there's no wholesome words coming out of this sister. There's no wholesome words coming out of this brother. And I'm going to deal, that's the, the final pill. I'm not going to deal with that tonight. But what I want to show you is that those of you brothers that are not married yet, you need to start dealing with your tongue, okay? You need to start dealing with your tongue, your speech while you're still by yourself. How you deal with your brothers, how you deal with your sisters, their children and so forth. 
okay? Because the day you get married, guess what's going to happen? If you don't know how to deal with it, you are you are uh, verbally abusive to your wife. You understand? You're going to break the sister spirit. I'm going to tell you right now. You'll break the sister spirit. Okay? Now I'm dealing with you married brothers. Watch this. Give me the book of Deuteronomy, okay? Deuteronomy chapter 22. And guess what? Those of you unmarried as well, you benefit from this, okay? Deuteronomy chapter 22. Read verse 14 for me. Deuteronomy chapter 22 verse 14. Start at verse 13. Start at verse 13. Watch this. Deuteronomy chapter 22 verse 13. Go ahead. If any man take a wife and go in unto her, and hate her. Now it says you take your wife, you go in unto her, you deal with your wife according to, um, you know, Hebrews 13 verse 4. It says, and hate her. Meaning what? Now you, 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 have, you, you have hatred, like you have hatred towards your wife. He's going to explain the hatred. Watch this, because you might say, I don't hate my wife. Watch the next verse. Go ahead. And give occasions of speech against her, and right bring there. up an evil name. And give occasion of speech against him. What is this explaining? Verbal abuse. That's what this is explaining right here. The Lord is explaining verbal abuse. You take a wife, you begin to hate her. How? You abuse the sister verbally. So what are you doing? All this, go back to Proverbs 17, verse 22. Proverbs 17, verse 22. Okay, read that. Proverbs chapter 17, verse 22. Go ahead. A merry heart doeth good like a medicine, mm -hmm. but a broken spirit drieth the bones. You see that? But a broken spirit drieth the bones. A broken spirit will dry the bones, meaning what? The sister spirit is going to be shut down, going to be destroyed and broken. Go back to Proverbs 15 now, verse 4 again. Proverbs chapter 15, verse 4. Come on. A wholesome tongue is a tree of life. You see that? A wholesome tongue is a tree of life. Let's get that. Get that in Sarag 1919. Let's see what the tree of life is. A wholesome tongue is a tree of life. Okay. Ecclesiasticus chapter 19, verse 19. Come on. The knowledge of the commandments of the Lord is the doctrine of life. Mm -hmm. You see that? The knowledge of the commandments of God, that's the doctrine of life, right? And they that do things that please him shall receive the fruit of the tree of immortality. You see that thing? So the knowledge of the commandments of the Lord, that's the doctrine of life, okay? So that's why he says the wholesome tongue is a tree of life. The commandments of the because in your tongue, is the what? The laws of God. That's why it says your wholesome tongue is a tree of life because you speak God's laws. Read on. Go back, the fear go of back the to Lord. Proverbs. Proverbs 15 verse 4 again. Go back to Proverbs. Yes, sir. Proverbs chapter 15 verse 4. Mm -hmm. A wholesome tongue is the tree of life. But perverseness therein is a breach in the spirit. You see that thing? Perverseness of the what? Because perverseness of the tongue, meaning your tongue is full of demons. So when you open it, it says it what? It breaches the spirit, creates a breach in the spirit. So you break the sister spirit down. You understand? So what is that called? Self-hatred. You verbal abuse your wife. You understand? You hate yourself. That's what the Lord is saying right there. That goes for you brothers that are married and for you brothers that are not married. Okay? Because this is important right here. Okay? That's important right there. You need to keep that in mind. Get your mind right. Now, watch this. Go back to Deuteronomy 22. Read verse 14 again. Deuteronomy chapter 22, verse 14. Mm -hmm. And give occasions of speech against her and bring up an evil name upon her and say, I took this woman and when I came to her, 
I found another maid. So now the key here is she, what is he doing? He is speaking evil of the sister to the sister. He says, he gets and give occasions of speech against her and bring up an evil name upon her. So what is he doing? He's breaking the sister's spirit verbally. Okay. He says, I took this woman and when I came to her, I found her not a man, meaning she was a whore. That's what he's saying. If they found the thing was found to be true, obviously, guess what? She would be stoned to death. But if she wasn't, he would be what? He would be chastised by the by the, the leaders of the nation. Okay. But what I'm trying to show you here is you brothers that are short tempered. You understand? You are you, you, you are short tempered. Okay, you are emotional. Okay. It's easy for you to get angry and so forth. Guess what? You were you the ones that the Bible is describing here. Okay. You the ones that the Bible is describing here. So make sure to get your mind right. Okay. Now watch this. The flip side is true also. Hmm. What's this thing right here? Give me the book of Sarah 25. Sarah 25, verse 20. Okay, watch this. Ecclesiastes chapter 25, verse 20. As really? the climbing up a sandy way is to the feet of the aged, mm -hmm. so is a wife full of words to a quiet man. You see that? So imagine and um, imagine an old man climbing up a sandy way. Okay. It says, because that's difficult. It's not easy for an old man to be climbing up a sandy way because you, you climb up in a sandy hill, your feet are gonna sink. You have to pull your feet out and make the next step. By the time you get to the top, guess what? Your knees are gonna feel like they are going to broke, they are going to break. You see that thing? your knuckles, everything gonna be painful. So it says, so is a wife full of words to a quiet man. Meaning the sister cannot shut the hell up, okay? She can't keep quiet. That's what the Lord is saying right there. So you sisters, make sure that you get married, make sure that you what? You deal with your mouth. Because a lot of you, you don't know how to shut the hell up, okay? Understand that thing. Watch this. Get that in um, Sarah 25. Sarah 25 and verse 25. Watch this. Read them. Ecclesiastes chapter 25, verse 25. Mm -hmm. Give the water no passage, neither a wicked woman liberty to get abroad. You see what the Bible is saying? Is that don't give no water, don't give water no passage. Meaning don't give. The water here is, is what? It's a metaphor for a woman that is what? That is getting abroad, meaning what? She's full of mouth. She cannot shut up, okay? So that's what the Bible is saying right there. Your, your Lord is talking to you. You understand? I'm not saying there's not going to be, obviously, there's going to be arguments in the house. There's going to be disagreements. But the way you, dis, you, you, you deal with your disagreements and your issues you, is you must open the Bible. That's how you deal with your issues. So what we're reading here is, it says, this is to the brothers now. You understand? It says, they give the water no passage, neither a wicked woman liberty to get abroad, meaning to run her mouth. Because there's nothing that, that really, there, there's nothing that, um, that will, 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 will make you less attractive to a man than a woman with a big black mouth that cannot be kept quiet. You have a big mouth, but you, are, you, you think that what's between your legs is what's gonna, what's gonna humble that man down. No, 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 no. What's between your legs is more enjoyable when the mouth is quiet. When you don't have a big black mouth, it doesn't lose value. When you have a big black mouth, it loses value very quickly. You understand? Understand that thing. Okay, now, give me Sarah 26, Sarah 26 verse 8. Watch this. Ecclesiastes, chapter 26, verse 8. Mm -hmm. 
A drunken woman in a ghetto abroad causes great anger. He does what? And she would causes great anger. So a drunken woman and a ghetto abroad. You understand? Woman that cannot, uh, woman that is drunk with philosophies, a woman that is an alcoholic, she cannot stop drinking and so forth. It says, and a ghetto abroad, a woman that has a big mouth. The law says what? Causes great anger. You see that thing? That's what the Lord is saying right there. Because now you're wearing a dress, but you have a man's spirit on you. You can't keep the, you can't keep quiet. You think you and your husband, you're on the same level. No, you're not. Okay, great. And she will not cover her own shame. This type of woman will not cover her own shame. You see, I see, I see, I see them here in the classes, wherever, even when we go and teach, the woman cannot, she just has a big black mouth. She can't keep quiet. And the man is so scared just sitting behind the woman. Yes, dear. That we see the stuff in the classes. We see them every day. When the woman is in the front, the black man is at the back. Hmm? The woman is the one that's the spokesperson. The law says, cause great anger because this woman cannot cover her own shame. But a brother that is a simp, you understand? A beta male, a zeta male, guess what? They're not going to see anything wrong with that. A beta male will not see anything wrong with a woman having running her mouth. You understand? A beta male don't see nothing wrong with that. Why? Because this woman is his mother. Yeah, this woman is his mother. His, she's mothering him. She treats him like his son, like her son. We see it all the time. You understand? So guess what? The Lord is saying, as a man, you need to be able to what? You have a woman that has a big mouth. Use the Bible to check that mouth. That's what the Bible is saying right there. You understand? Only an alpha will rip a Jezebel's head off. That's an alpha. An alpha male will not take that. Okay? That's a topic for another day. Now, watch the sisters thought, you know, you know, me, I'm equal opportunity. Watch this. Give me Give me, go back to Proverbs, okay? Give me Proverbs 15, verse 1. Go back to Proverbs 15, verse 1 again. Proverbs chapter 15 and verse 1. One more again. Proverbs chapter 15, verse 1. A soft answer turneth away wrath, mm -hmm. but grievous words stir up anger. You see that? So both you, both men and women, you need to know how to talk, talk to each other in a what? He says, a soft answer will turn away wrath. That's what the Lord is saying. It's like medicine. You understand? Because I know a simp is already thinking, oh, that means I must just say yes, dear. Yes, that's the same. The same mindset to think like that. We're not talking about that. I'm not talking about that. Mm -mm. Okay, I'm not talking about that. So that's a topic for another day. That's not today, though. Watch this. Give me Romans 3, verse 13. Romans 3, verse 13. Watch this. The reason why you find that during social gatherings, you know, we, we have our feasts or the days that we have set up so we come together as a nation and so forth. Um, watch this. Like I'm going back to, uh, you know, that mealy mouse. I'm sitting by myself. I don't want to talk to no brothers. Or if I am, I'm always among the sisters. Watch this. Give me Romans 3 verse 13. Romans chapter 3, verse you know 13. Wait, 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 wait. Let, hold on a second. I, I want to bring this out, okay? Hmm. I think it's in Sirach 26, right? Hold on a second. Let me see, let me see. Give me a second for that. Hmm. Romans chapter 3, I think it's Sirach 42. Yeah, Sirach 42. Sirach 42 and verse... Sarak 42 and verse 18. No, start of verse 12. Read 12 and 18 together. Read them. Ecclesiasticus, chapter 42, verse 12. Behold, not every body's beauty 
and sit not in the midst of women. You see what the Bible is saying? Read that again. Read verse 12. It is strong for me. Come on. Ecclesiastes chapter 42, verse 12. Go ahead. Behold, not everybody's beauty and mm -hmm. sit not in the midst of women. You see what the Bible is saying? It says, don't behold everybody's beauty. What is he talking about? Last. You understand? Last. Don't lust everybody's beauty. Meaning what? The beauty of a woman is the beauty of goes into the beauty of a woman and sit not in the midst of women. If you are a brother, you always find yourself in the midst of women. Something wrong with you. Okay. You have that's that whole spirit. Okay, that's that gay spirit. Oh, yeah, that's that LGBTQYZXW. That's that spirit right there. Okay, Ray, go ahead. For from garments cometh the moth, and from uh -huh. women really? wickedness. You see that? Because that, there's what are you gonna the, the Lord is telling you that you all you're gonna find wickedness in there. Wickedness is in there, right there. That's what the Lord is saying. You understand? Now, give me Romans 3, verse 13. Romans 3, verse 13. Okay, read that for me. Romans chapter 3, verse 13. Ray. Their throat is an open sepulcher. With their tongues, they have used deceit. Mm -hmm. The poison of asps is under their lips. Now, this goes into what? This goes into brothers that don't know how to deal. They don't know how to interact with others. You understand? Whether brothers or sisters, they don't know how to interact. They don't know how to deal with your neighbor. You are struggling. Because guess what? When we gather together as a congregation, you'll always be the offended one. You'll always be causing offenses. Why? Because when you open your mouth, it says your throat is an open sepulchre. You don't have, your tongue is not full of wholesome words. That's what the Lord is saying. Ray, go ahead. Whose mouth is full of cursing and bitterness. You see that thing? This is a bitter brother or sister right here. It says, whose mouth is full of cursing and bitterness. Ray. Their feet are swift to shed blood. Meaning hatred. Because in order for you to do this, that's hatred for your brother, for your sister. Go ahead. Destruction and misery are in their ways. So the Lord is letting you know that this type of brother or sister, they are miserable. That's why when they come amongst the brethren, you have to spill your poison upon your brother. And you, you are basically, what are you doing? You are staining the nobility of your kindred. That's what you're doing. Like we read in Sarah 22, verse 18 and 9. Read. And the way of peace have they not known. You see that? The way of peace they have not known. Meaning what? They don't have that covenant of salt. They don't have that spirit of joy, but they've got the spirit of bitterness, cursings, murder, hatred. You understand? They are miserable. They hate themselves. Ray. There is no fear of God before their eyes. That's it right there. All of this boils down to what? They don't fear the Lord. Because if you fear the Lord, here's what's going to happen. When you come around, you're going to be like this. Watch this. Get that in Ecclesiastes, Ecclesiastes chapter 1, verse 11. I love this chapter right here. Beautiful chapter. Ecclesiastes chapter 1, verse 11. Watch this. Ecclesiastes chapter 1, verse 11. Go ahead. The fear of the Lord is honor and glory mm -hmm. and Great. gladness and a crown of rejoicing. You see that? You see what? When you fear the Lord, he says what? The fear of the Lord will bring you honor and glory, which is the kingdom. Our name will be exalted above all nations on earth. That's the honor and gladness. That's the spirit of joy and a crown of rejoicing, the kingdom. That's what the Lord is saying right there. When you fear God, guess what? These are the type of things we're going to start to see. Read on, verse 12. Come on. The fear of the Lord maketh a merry heart. You see that? The fear of the Lord maketh a merry heart. When you find yourself, you always grind. You was the grimy Negro in the world. You come into the truth. You're still the same wicked Negro. You're still that brother who nobody. You and you when 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 the brothers around you listen, you just depressing. Hmm. You just depressing. You understand? 
No, no, no. You can't be, you have to let that thing go. You must repent. That's what the Lord is saying. The fear of the Lord is as what? Is as maketh a merry heart. When you don't fear God, you're going to what? You're not going to have a merry heart. So guess what? You're going to have a broken spirit. Not only will you have a broken spirit, but you'll break the spirit of your wife too. You'll break the spirit of your husband. That's what the Lord is saying right there. Read again verse 12. Go ahead. Ecclesiastes chapter 1 verse 12. Mm -hmm. The fear of the Lord maketh a merry heart and giveth joy and gladness in a long life. You see that? He says, giveth joy and gladness in a long life. That's it right there. That's beautiful right there. When you see, when you find yourself that, okay, I'm talking to the married brothers and sisters now. 90% of the time, it's just arguments in the house. It's just disagreements, something wrong. You understand? 90% of the time, it's just disagreement. It's tense and all that. Mm -mm, something's wrong. You understand? The, the, there's, the fear of the Lord is not in there. The fear of the Lord, the spirit of the Lord is not in there. It's the spirit of Satan. Because there's no joy, there's no gladness. You understand? That means you're not going to have a long life. That means there's hatred in the house. Understand that. Okay? So you brothers, I'm talking to both men and women, married or unmarried. You need to understand. Do not trouble your house because your spirit is not correct. That's why it's important for you to make sure that your spirit is right. Before you can deal with a wife, before you can deal with a husband, a lord, make sure that you know how to deal with yourself first. Until such time, don't be thinking about marriage or any, even anything even remotely related. Because if you cannot stand your own self, what makes you think you'll be able to deal with a wife that you're supposed to grow all together with, a husband that you're supposed to grow all together with? It's not going to happen. I need you men and women to understand that because that's, those are those are called toxic marriages. You understand? Mm. Mm. I want to go into marriage. Mm. Should I just touch on it? <laughs> no, 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 no. I'm not going there. I'm not going there. Okay. So the reason why I'm going over this is because the social life it is important in Israel because the Lord gave us laws on how to deal one with another. You understand? It's very important to know how to deal in Islam, according to the scriptures, okay? Watch this. Now, let's deal with the next pillar, okay? Let's deal with the next pillar, your work life. Let's deal with that. The next pillar, the four, which is the fourth stage, your work life. You must have a good work life, okay? What do I mean by that? In order for you to have a good work life, you must have, you need to be able to acquire, you, you must have a skill. It's important to have skills. You must have skill because that skill is going to get you a what? It's going to get you a job or help you to start a business so you can maintain and sustain yourself and your nation. So skills then work. Okay, watch this. We went over this. Um, there's a class, there's an in-depth class that we went over going into self-development. Watch this. Give me the book of Ecclesiastes 1, verse 19. Okay, read that. Sarah 1 verse 19. Ecclesiastes chapter 1 verse 19. Come on. Wisdom reigneth down skill and knowledge of understanding mm -hmm. and exalted them to honor that hold their fast. You see what the Bible is saying? Wisdom, with the wisdom of the Lord will give you skill. A skill to pursue a career. You understand? A skill to a skill to do what to start your own business. You understand those type of things, the wisdom of the Lord will bring that to you. Understand that. Because in the truth, don't think that you're not supposed to have a job. You know, you must have a job. That's the law. You understand? You must be able, you must develop a skill because we need skills in Israel. Don't just develop skills that only just gonna maintain Israel's kingdom. No. The skills that you develop, yeah, they will maintain yourself and your family. But also those skills are going to be useful in Israel because we're building a nation in captivity. Okay. Read that thing again. Verse 19. Ecclesiastes chapter 1 verse 19. 
Mm -hmm. Wisdom renders down skill and knowledge of understanding and exalted them to honor that hold her fast. Wisdom will exalt you to honor if you hold her fast. You understand? Watch this. I'm going to give an example. Our forefathers that had skills, okay? And because they had skills and because of the skills they have, they had skills because of the wisdom that the Lord bestowed upon them. Give me the book of Acts, chapter 18, verse 1. Acts 18, verse 1. Watch this. The book of Acts, chapter 18, verse 1. Go ahead. After these things, Paul departed from Athens and come to Corinth. Now the apostle Paul left Athens. Now he went to Corinth. Now, Go ahead. And found a certain Jew named Aquila, born in Pontus, lately come mm -hmm. from Italy, with his wife Priscilla. Because that Claudius hey. had commanded all Jews to depart from Rome and came unto them. You see what he's saying? So our, our, our four parents, Aquila, you understand, and his wife Priscilla. So this is husband and wife. So Claudius Caesar had commanded that all the Jews must what? He says, oh, commanded all Jews to depart from Rome because there was Jews in Rome. Okay, go ahead. And because he was of the same craft, he abode with them and wrought, for by their occupation, they were tent makers. So you see what he's saying? He says, because he was of the same craft, he says, he abode with them and wrought, for by their occupation, they were tent makers. So that's, that's the business that they were in. This is husband and wife. They had a business that they were running the business together. You understand? So their skills was in what? They, were, they, they constructed tents. Like today, you know, when we have, um, we have tabernacles and so forth, they, 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 today they will be, that will be their occupation. You know, the, 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 the gazebo that we use when we go to camp and so forth. Yes, that will be the business that we'll be in. You understand? So Esau doesn't know anything about this. Esau today that is selling tents and so they get it from us. Don't get it twisted. But what I'm showing is that is our forefathers had skills. That skill is gonna get you the is gonna get you to start a business or is gonna get you to get a job that you'll be able to maintain yourself and your nation. So skills development is very is very paramount in Esau. Okay, watch this. Give me the book of Acts, chapter 9, verse 36. This is our foremother, okay? Tabitha, read that. Acts 9, 36. Acts, chapter 9, verse 36. Read. Now there was a Joppa, a certain disciple named Tabitha, mm -hmm. which by interpretation is called Dorcas. This woman was full of good works and arms deeds, which she did. So our foremother, Dorcas Tabitha, is that she was full of good works and arms deed, which she did. So what is the good works that, what, 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 what was her occupation? What was her skills? Watch this. Jump down to verse 39 now. Read verse 39. Acts chapter 9, verse 39. Go ahead. Then Peter arose and went with them. When he was come, they brought him into the upper chamber, and all the widows stood by him weeping and showing the coats and garments which Dorcas made while she was with them. You see that thing? So she knew, the sister knew how to sew. She made garments. She made garments for Israel. That is the skills that the Lord bestowed upon her. You understand? The arms did that she did for her nation. So skills development is very critical in Israel. You must develop skills, okay? Because they are going to benefit yourself so you can maintain yourself. Not only that, but it will maintain and benefit Israel. So you have to always be thinking nation building. You, can't, you, you mustn't be, once you come into this truth, you must, your mind must open up. You must start to think about your nation, not just yourself. You understand? We must follow to the footsteps of our forefathers and for mothers, they had skills. You understand? Watch this. Give me Sarah 14, verse 11. Sarah chapter 14, verse 11. Okay. 
Read this. Ecclesiastes, chapter 14, verse 11. Read. My son, according to thy ability, do good to thyself and give the Lord his due offering. You see what the Bible is saying? The Lord is saying, it says, he says, according to your ability, meaning according to your skills that the Lord has bestowed upon you, he says, do good to yourself. So you want to improve your education so you can get a better paying job. You understand? You want, you, you, you want, you want to live in a certain area. So in order for those things to take place, guess what you must do? He says, according to your ability, according to the skills that the Lord has given you, so that you are able to develop and improve yourself. You understand? The Lord, the Lord is saying, you must do, you, you must do that. He's giving us the, uh, the ability to do that. So he's not saying neglect the work of the Most High. No, he's not saying that. The work of the Lord comes first. Then once you're done with the Lord, work of the Lord, you must also be able to do what? Improve yourself. You understand? You must have a good work life. You see that thing? You must have a good work life because your work life is going to do what? Be in order for you to get a good work life, you must have good skills. You must have good skill sets in order for you to get yourself that job or to start that business. You understand? So all of that, the Lord says he gave us the ability to do that. Read that again, verse 11. Ecclesiastic, chapter 14, verse 11. Go ahead. My son, according to thy ability, do good to thyself. Mm -hmm. And give the Lord his due offering. You see that? And give the Lord his due offering. Keep the commandments, do the work of the Lord. But guess what? You must be able to also, we must develop skills in Israel because they are need, we need skills. We are a nation. Because we are a nation, a nation needs infrastructure. We need, we need certain businesses and operations that will be able to help us to progress as a nation in the spirit of Christ. Okay, that's what the Lord is teaching us right there. So yes, we read the scriptures, but the scriptures is the fuel for you to apply yourself. We're not here to become professional students. We must progress in this truth. Okay, now watch this. Give me Sirach 715. Ecclesiastes chapter 7 verse 15. Go ahead. Hate not laborious work, neither husbandry, which mm -hmm. the Most High hath ordained. You see what he's saying? He says, don't hate laborious work. Don't be lazy. Because if you wait to work, it means you're lazy. You are a bum. The Lord says, don't be a bum. Neither husbandry. That goes into farming and so forth, which the Most High hath ordained. So work, the Lord has ordained for us to work. That's the commandment. So you can't say you want to start a business, but you behave like an employee. What do I mean by that? You say you want to start a business, but you behave like a brother that does nine to five. That's not going to happen. You understand? That's not going to happen. You are not going to start that business. You, you, want, you, you say you want a business, you behave like an employee. You wake up late. You don't wake up early. You don't exercise. You don't eat right. How are you going to start a business? Because a, a business is like a baby. You have to be able to wake up early, sleep late. In order for you to know how to do that, to your body to be able to handle that, guess what you must do? You need to exercise consistently. You need to have a good schedule. You understand? You must be able to do that if you want a business. If you want to be an entrepreneur, you must conduct yourself like one. Your mindset must be the mind of an entrepreneur. Meaning what? Entrepreneurs don't sleep eight hours. They don't sleep six hours. You understand? They sleep very short hours. They are always, they are working because they are building their business up. You understand? But if you cannot do that, just get a job. That's fine. Okay. Nothing wrong with that. It's an honest job. You're doing nine to five. That's okay. Okay. Watch this. Get to the general stage. Ecclesiastes chapter 10, verse 30. Go ahead. The poor man is honored for his skill, mm -hmm. and the rich man is honored for his riches. 
You see what the Bible says, a poor man is honored for his skill. I'm going to show you, I'm going to give an example of that. A poor man is honored for his skill. Get me the book of Genesis 41. Okay, this is our forefather Joseph in Egypt. Okay, when Pharaoh had a dream, our forefather, the Lord put the spirit upon our forefather Jacob, I mean Joseph, to be able to what? To help Pharaoh understand and interpret his dream. Watch this. Get the book of Genesis 41, verse 14. Read that. Genesis chapter 41, verse 14. Read. Then Pharaoh sent and called Joseph, and they brought him hastily out of the dungeon. And he shaved himself and changed his raiment and came in unto Pharaoh. Remember, Pharaoh was the king. He was, he was the king of Egypt. So Jacob could, jo sorry, Joseph, our forefather Joseph could not uh, appear before Pharaoh looking like a ragamuffin. No. He could, no, no, mm -mm. he could not. That's why he says, he says what? He says he shaved himself and changed his raiment and came in unto Pharaoh. You see that thing right there? He was going to appear before the king. Understand that. Now watch this. Now jump down to verse. Um, keep reading. Read on. Genesis chapter 41 verse 15. Mm -hmm. And Pharaoh said, said unto Joseph, I have Read. dreamed a dream and there is none that can interpret it. Mm -hmm. And I have heard say of thee that thou canst understand the dream to interpret it. Read. And Joseph answered Pharaoh saying, it is not in me. God shall give Pharaoh an answer of peace. Come on. And Pharaoh said, said unto Joseph, in my dream, behold, I stood upon the bank of the river. Mm -hmm. And behold, they came up out of the river seven kind, fed fleshed and well favored, and they fed in the middle. Go ahead. And behold, seven other kind came up after them, poor and very ill favored and lean fleshed, such as I never saw in all the land of Egypt for badness. So now he's explaining the dream, okay? He says the one dream is I'm seeing, I'm seeing seven cattle that were fed, they were what they were well favored. Then he says, I also am seeing seven other kind, meaning cattle, that were what they were ill-favored, they were thin. You understand? With that, they were not looking healthy. Go ahead. And the lean and the ill-favored kind did eat up the first seven fat kind. So now the, the, the skinny cows ate the fat cows. Really? And when they had eaten them up, it could not be known that they had eaten them, but they were still ill-favored as at the beginning. So I awoke. So he says, after they ate the seven fat cows, he says, it didn't make a difference. They still looked thin. Do you understand? Now jump down to verse, read verse 26 now. Go ahead. Genesis chapter 41, verse 26. Read. The seven good kind are seven years. Mm -hmm. And the seven years are seven years. The dream is one. So now he's interpreting the dream now. He's explaining what the dream means. Go ahead. And the seven thin and ill-favored kind that came up after them are seven years. And the seven empty years blasted with the east wind shall be seven years of famine. So you see what he's explaining now. He's telling, listen, the dream is one because he also saw the years that were, the, the, those that were blasted and those that were full and good. So now he says the dream is one. The seventh thing and ill-favored kind that came up after them are seven years. The seven, he says, the seven empty years blasted with the east wind shall be the seven years of famine. So Joseph, the Lord put the spirit upon our forefather Joseph to interpret the dream unto Pharaoh, what it means. Remember it says, he says, the poor man shall be honored for his skill. Don't forget the thought now, okay? So now, Joseph is explaining to Pharaoh what the dream means, meaning there's a, there's a famine coming. The first seven years is going to be play years of plenty. 
the, the, the seven years that follow is going to be the years of famine. That's what he's saying. Read. Genesis chapter 41, verse 28. This is the thing which I have spoken unto Pharaoh. What God is about to do, he showeth unto Pharaoh. Read. Behold, there come seven years of great plenty throughout all the land of Egypt. So now it says the first seven years is going to be the years of plenty. Read. And there shall arise after them seven years of famine, and all the plenty shall be forgotten in the land of Egypt, and the famine shall consume the land. You see what he's saying? He says, after these seven years of plenty, you, when the seven years of famine hit, nobody going to even remember the, seven year, the first seven years of plenty. Go ahead. And the plenty shall not be known in the land by reason of that famine following, for mm -hmm. it shall be very grievous. You see what he's saying? He's letting you know it's going to be it's going to be so bad. It's going to be terrible. So remember, we are in spiritual Egypt now. You think this is not going to happen? It's going to happen. It's already starting. I posted a video that uh, no, I, I'm not. I, I don't know how many of you actually watched the video. They say uh, it it is hitting the liquor industry. So the company that makes bottles now it says. They, they cannot produce, they cannot make bottles as they used because of the, because of the what? The corona, because of the COVID. So they had to halt production because of the lockdowns and so forth. Now, now they are unable to produce those number of bottles. So that's going to affect the liquor industry. That's going to affect the brothers that, the brothers and sisters that own bottle stores and so forth in the cases, they are going to be affected. That means there's going to be a shortage of alcohol. What do you think is following next? Food. What do you think is following next? The, 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 you know, the, the stuff, you know, your lotions, your toilet paper, your sprays, all of these things for your hygiene and so forth. Those things are going to happen as well. They are going to be affected. So don't get it twisted. The famine is coming. You understand? Right. Genesis chapter 41, verse 32. And for that, the dream was doubled unto Pharaoh twice. It is because the thing is established by God and God mm -hmm. will shortly bring it to pass. So the Lord will bring this thing to pass. Now Joseph is going to provide the solution to Pharaoh of what Pharaoh must do. Watch this. Go ahead. Now, therefore, let Pharaoh look out a man discreet and wise and set him over the land of Egypt. You see, now he's setting order in Egypt. Joseph, our forefather, was a man of wisdom. You understand? He had great skill because the Lord bestowed it upon him. Now he's setting order in Egypt, telling Pharaoh, here's how we're going to handle this thing. Go ahead. Let Pharaoh do this and let him appoint officers over the land and take up the fifth part of the land of Egypt in the seven plenteous years. Okay, so now he says they must take up the fifth part of the land of Egypt in the seven plenteous years. So Joseph is coming with a plan. He's explaining, he explained that what the dream means. Now he's providing a solution to help Pharaoh. Right? And let them gather all the food of those good years that come and lay up corn under the hand of Pharaoh and let them keep food in the cities. Right? And that food shall be forestalled to the land against the seven years of famine which shall be in the land of Egypt, that the land perished not through the famine. That the land does not perish through the famine. See, verse 35 and 36 is heavy right there because this goes into what? The food pantry. We must stock up. You understand? Not just food, but the other basic necessities that we need. You understand? So the Lord, Joseph is telling Pharaoh that, listen, you need to stock up. You need to save up. You need to put food the, the necessities in warehouses in the seven years of plenty. Because once the famine hit, everybody gonna, everybody gonna forget the seven years of plenty. Isn't that what's going on now? Because look at the abundance of, of food, the abundance of fruits and vegetables and so forth. They are happening that on the earth, right? You can just, on your, on your mobile app, you can just order food. Within 30 minutes, you'll see a scooter coming to your house to deliver food to your house. So there's a lot of convenience, but them days are going to be gone. So during the year, during this time when everybody's still in La La Land, 
the Lord is also telling us we must do what? When we need to stock up for the famine that's going to come is because it's going to be very grievous. You, you brothers and sisters understand that it is coming. Yes, sir. Okay, go ahead. Genesis chapter 41, verse 37. And the thing was good in the eyes of Pharaoh and in the eyes of all his servants. Read. And Pharaoh said unto his servants, can we find such a one as this is a man in whom the spirit of God is? Mm -hmm. Read. And Pharaoh said unto Joseph, for as much as God had showed thee all this, there is none so discreet and wise as thou art. Mm -hmm. Thou shalt be over my house, and according unto thy word shall all my people be ruled. Only in the throne will I be greater than thou. Now read verse 40 again. Genesis chapter 41 verse 40. Mm -hmm. Thou shalt be over my house, and according unto thy word shall all my people be ruled. Only in the throne will I be greater than thou. So you see, Joseph became second in charge in, in Egypt. Joseph became second in charge in Egypt. That's why what go back to Sarah 10 verse 30 again. So we don't and we don't lose the thought. Okay, read that. Ecclesiastes chapter 10, verse 30. Mm -hmm. The poor man is honored for his skill. Read. And the rich man is honored for his riches. Because Pharaoh was not honored for his, for his wisdom. No, Pharaoh was honored for his riches. Joseph was honored for his skill. That's why he was able to do what? That's why Pharaoh, and the Lord put the spirit upon Pharaoh to promote Joseph to be second in charge in Egypt. That means Joseph had a what? He had a good work ethic. You see that? He had a good work ethic. Joseph had a good work ethic. He was in a raga mafia. You understand? When it came to the work at the plantation, he did the work. Because Joseph didn't say, okay, listen, you are a Hamite, you are a dusty Hamite. I'm not going to help you. Listen, you see, when he helped Pharaoh, guess what? His nation, the children of Israel, guess what? We were able to survive through the famine because of what our forefather Joseph did. If Joseph was a bum, what was, a, what, 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 what was going to happen? Because a lot of the times we don't think about that stuff. Our forefather Joseph was a man of honor and he had a good work ethic. You understand? He, he knew how to, he was wise as a serpent and harmless as a dove. He, that's how he moved. That's why I always tell you, brothers, when you are at the plantation, listen, conduct yourself. You understand? You must conduct yourself at the plantation. Don't be acting like a demon at the plantation. Do what you're supposed to. You understand? Abide by the rules that are that are that are written in your contract and so forth. That's all that the Lord wants you to do. You understand? As long as those laws don't, those, those rules don't break God's laws, be good to go. Okay. But what I'm showing you is even during the time of the Egyptians, because we was in captivity, our forefathers was honored because they had a good work ethic and they had skill that the Lord put upon them. Likewise, in these last days, is the same thing. You understand? It's the same thing. Okay. Watch this. Daniel, our forefather, the same way. Let's get there. In Daniel. Daniel 1. Get Daniel chapter 1 and verse Daniel 1. Uh, let's read verse 4. Daniel chapter 1 verse 4. Read. Children in whom was no blemish, but well mm -hmm. favored. And skillful well, in all wisdom. You see that? Cunning knowledge. The first thing they had, they says they were skillful in wisdom. They were skillful in wisdom. Go ahead. And skillful in all wisdom and cunning in knowledge. Mm -hmm. And understanding science. You see that? They understood science. Right. And such as had ability in them to stand in the king's palace. To do and what? whom they might teach the learning and the tongue of the Chaldeans. 
Now read that part again. Is there such as an ability in them to do what? Such as an ability in them to stand in the king's palace. Stop right there. It says our forefathers, okay? It says they had what? They were skillful in all wisdom. They were cunning in knowledge and, and they understood science. Is there, and such as her ability in them. Remember what we read in Sarah 14 verse 11? It says, according to thy ability, do, do good to thyself. They had ability in them to stand in the king's palace. Now you, have, you really have to think about it, right? Our forefather Daniel, he was a young man. It says, he was able to stand in the king's palace. That means Daniel was able to what? To communicate on that level with the king. That means Daniel was what? He had skill. Daniel had a good work ethic. Daniel had a good name. Daniel was what? He was wise. He had good, he had, he had good bedside manners. He wasn't disrespectful. You understand? That's why he was able to stand in the king's palace. Okay, read. And whom they might teach the learning in the tongue of the Chaldeans. You see that thing? They were even on that level where they can teach the tongue of the Chaldeans. So our forefather Daniel and them, there was not bumps. You understand? There was not bumps. Because when we are at work, that's how these nations look at us. They, they just look at us like bumps. No, but when we come into the truth, you, you just, we need to change that. That's what the Lord is teaching us. That's why they say talent will get you through the door but your attitude will keep you in the room. You see that? Talent will get you through the door. You go for an interview, you get the job, right? Your, he says, talent will get you in, but your attitude will keep you there. Why? Because of how you conduct yourself. You're lazy, you understand? You complain, you mama, you don't get the work done. Guess what? You're going to have an ill name. You're going to be that filthy, you're going to be that brother. That is compared to a filthy stone, lazy bum. Okay, now watch this. Um, get that in Proverbs. Okay, give me Proverbs real quick. Watch this, because remember, don't forget, we was in captivity. Give me Proverbs 16, verse 7. Proverbs chapter 16 and verse 7. Read that. Proverbs chapter 16, verse 7. Mm -hmm. When a man's ways please the Lord, he maketh yes. even his enemies to be at peace with him. You see that? When a man's ways please the Lord, he says he maketh even his enemies to be at peace with him. That's how our forefathers moved. They pleased the Lord so much that even our enemies was, was at peace with us. You see that? So it all goes back to the Father. You understand? Even if they want to do harm to you, but the most High God is the one saying, mm, you're not touching my, my children. They're saving me. They are loyal to me. So don't touch them. That's what the Lord is saying right there. We need to understand that because a lot of the time we have an ill name. At work, you bend bridges. You don't know how when you leave, you just, you be kissing everybody out. You dumb as hell. You're not supposed to do any of that. When you leave, make sure that you what? You build a good bridge. You understand? You live with the spirit of grace. Okay? Now watch this. Give me, give me the book of Psalms 104, verse 21. Psalms 104, verse 21. Let's read it. Psalms chapter 104, verse 21. Go ahead. The young lions roar after their prey mm -hmm. and seek their meat from God. You see that? The young lions now, talk about lions in the jungle, okay? It says what? They roar after their prey, meaning they go hunting and seek their meat from the law. Go ahead. The sun arises, they gather themselves together and lay mm -hmm. them down in their dens. You see that thing? It says the sun arises, they gather themselves together and they lay them down in their dens. Because is the lions, they hunt better at night. A lion hunts better at night. You understand? Night vision warfare. Mm. That's a topic for another day. Read that again, verse 22. Go ahead. Psalms chapter 104, verse 22. Mm -hmm. 
the sun arises, they gather themselves together and lay them down in their dens. You see, because when the sun goes up, you will find them sleeping up there. Why? Because they've been hunting at night. Okay, rain. Watch this, go ahead. Man goeth forth unto his work and to his labor until the evening. You see that thing? Likewise, likewise what the young lions do, he says, men also, that's what we must do. He says, men goeth forth unto his work and to his labor until the evening. Nine to five. You see that thing right there? Morning until the evening. We be doing what? We laboring. You must have a good work life because that's how you maintain your, your family. That's how you maintain your nation. You understand? Because if you don't work, you are a bum. You don't want to work. You are a bum. A brother that doesn't have a job, but he's looking for one, we, we're not talking about that brother. We're talking about that brother who doesn't want to work. Although he can get a job, but he doesn't want to do it. You understand? That's a bum brother. Okay, that's a bum right there. Watch this. Give me the book of Ecclesiastes, because when you do that, you, you're, you're, you're doing that because you want to maintain your nation. Okay? Get that in... Um, before you get there, right? Hmm. Give me, give me the book of, uh, give me that in um, uh, Thessalonians. Give me that thing. Give me that in Thessalonians, okay? Second Thessalonians 3. Read verse 10. Second Thessalonians chapter 3, verse 10. Go ahead. For even when we were with you, this yeah. we commanded you, that if any man would not work, neither should he eat. If any would not work, neither should he eat. That's just what the Lord is saying. Watch the next verse now. Go ahead. For we hear that there are some which walk among you disorderly, mm -hmm. working not at all, but are busy bodies. You see what the Bible is saying? Because that was what was going on in Thessalonica. Yeah, that is what was going on in Thessalonica. There were those that did not want to work. He says what? Some which walk among you disorderly. What is the disorder? They did not want to work. You understand? These were lazy bums. These were filthy stones. Okay? Like, like some Israelite camps we know about. Those that say, no, women must go to work. They are the lions. They hunt. They protect the pride. That's some evil stuff. Read that again, verse 11. Second Thessalonians chapter 3, verse 11. Mm -hmm. For we hear that there are some which walk among you disorderly, working not at all, but are busy bodies. They are busy bodies, okay? They are idle, so they are doing much evil, right? Now them that are such, we command and exhort by our Lord Jesus Christ, mm -hmm. that with quietness they work and eat their own bread. You see what the Bible is saying? It says, with quietness they must work, meaning shut the hell up and work. Get a job. Okay, stop running your mouth in the street corners with Galama ties. Mm -mm. It says what? With quietness they work and eat their own bread. You see that thing right there? Go ahead. But ye, brethren, be not weary in well-doing. He says, don't be weary in well-doing. Don't stop doing well, according to the scriptures. What was the well-doing? Having a job to maintain yourself, your wife, your kids, your nation. Okay, go ahead. And if any man obey not our word by this epistle, note that man and have no mm. company with him that he mm. may be ashamed. You see what the Bible is saying? It says, when if any man obey not our word regarding what? Getting a job, being a responsible and accountable brother or sister. It says what? It says, note that man, meaning point him out, put him on blast and have no company with him. Don't deal with him that he may be ashamed. That's the reason why he has to be put out. Read. Yet count him not as an enemy, but mm. admonish him as a brother. You see that thing? He says, but don't treat him as an enemy, but you correct, you correct him as a brother. The reason why he's put out is not because he's an enemy, but he's a brother, but he must be put to shame so that he can what? go out there and look for work like the lions do. Likewise, we must do the same thing. We must lead by that example. Okay? So that's what the Lord is teaching us right there. 
is called one, having a good work ethic. The, apostle, the apostles had to deal with this because you had some brothers in, in, in during the time of um, the apostles in Thessalonica who did not want to get a job, who did not want to work. That's why there was rebuked sharply because there was out of order, okay? That's why now we, 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 we were dealing with the fact that um, brothers and sisters, you need to, we know, you need to upskill. You need to improve your skills. You need to get, get a certificate in this or the other. Improve yourself. You can't be sitting in that dead end job, but you don't want to do nothing. You complaining all the time, so on and so forth. No, but you know, at the end of the month, um, the, 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 this, my salary is not enough. Okay, but what are you doing about it? Are you, are you getting new skills? Are you getting a certification? Are you looking? What are you doing? Are you just sitting there just complaining? That's what the Lord, that's why we are now on a program to do what? To skills development and improve, to improve ourselves. So we can be able to do what? To maintain our nation and our families. You brothers understand that thing, right? Yes, sir. Okay, what well, praises to the most high? Watch this. Give me the book of, give me the book of Ecclesiastes, okay, chapter three, verse 13. And you know what, before you get there, so let me back up a little bit. One thing that we need to understand is this, right? I mentioned earlier that you cannot say you want to start a business, but you're lazy. You don't take care of yourself. You don't eat healthy. You don't exercise. You don't have a good schedule. Everything is just haphazard. One, two, you are lazy. You're not going to be able to start a business, nor get a job, because at, at work, that's why it's called getting a job. You must work. If you are lazy, you understand? You behave like an employee, but you want to run a business. None of those things are going to come to pass. Because why? Because you are, you are not realistic. Okay, watch this. Give me that in Sarah. Give me Ecclesiastes real quick. I'm going to show you what I mean by that. Okay. Um, wait, let me see. Sarah 23. Give me Sarah chapter 23 and verse Sarah 23 and verse 5. Ecclesiastes chapter 23, verse 5. Go ahead. Turn away from me vain hopes and concupiscence, mm. and thou shalt hold him up that is desirous always to serve thee. You see what the Bible is saying? It says, turn away from me vain hopes. That's a dream. That's a simp. A simp, anything that a simp says, there's no realism in it because he's not doing anything on the ground to make sure that this thing comes to pass. So as a nation, both men and women, you can't say, you know what? I want to get a new job. But what are you doing to get a new job? Are you applying? If yes, how many, how many jobs are, do you apply to on a day? No, just one or two. No, then you don't want a new job. Then you're okay with where you're at. You see what I'm saying? You want to start a, biz a, a, a business. Okay, no problem. Do you have skills? No, I don't, I don't have none. So how are you going to start a business? What skills do you have? What's your business going to be like? What's your target market? Did you research the market you want to go into? Did you research the market that you want to sell to? No, I have not. No, you don't want to start a business. Just sit right there and be quiet. When you're ready to start a business, you start to ask the right questions and your behavior and your conduct will change. The Bible is about change. The Lord gave us the power to change. You understand? You must not be moving around with the spirit of vain hopes. Read that again, verse 5. Ecclesiastes chapter 23, verse 5. Go ahead. Turn away from me vain hopes and concupiscence. Mm -hmm. And thou shalt hold him up that is desirous always to serve thee. You see that thing? So this is the prayer. It says, turn away from me vain hopes, meaning dreams, fairy tales, okay? That's, what the, that's, that's the prayer we all must have. You have that same spirit. Your job is to pray this prayer right here. That's what the Lord is teaching us right there. You understand? To have a sense of realism because if you are lazy, 
and, and you are a dreamer, none of these things are going to come to pass. Okay, get that in Sarag 19. No, Sarag 22 verse 1. Ecclesiastes 22 verse 1. Great. Really? A slothful man is compared to a filthy stone. Mm -hmm. And everyone will hiss him out to his disgrace. You see what the Bible says, a slothful man is compared to a filthy stone. That's a pile of dude. And everyone will hiss him out to his disgrace. Because when you're lazy, you are a lazy bum, you are a disgrace. That's what the Lord is saying. That goes for both men and women. You are a lazy sister, you are a bum. You are a lazy brother, bum. Simple. So the Lord says, we must repent. We must change. Go ahead. Verse 2. A slothful man is compared to the fields of a dunghill. Mm -hmm. Every man that takes it up will shake his hand. Because guess what? You bring a lazy man into your workplace, he's going to destroy everything. Because he's lazy. You understand? So likewise, in the truth, is the same thing. We, there's work we want to do. The brother is a lazy bar. Nothing want to get that. Read that again, verse 2. Ecclesiastes 22, verse 2. A slothful man is compared to the filth of a dunghill. Every man that takes it up will shake his hand. You see that thing? Every man that takes it up will shake his hand. Go ahead. An evil natured son is the dishonor of his father that begat him. Mm -hmm. And a foolish daughter is born to his loss. You see that? An evil na natured son is a dishonor of his is a dishonor of his father that begat him. Why? Because he's a filthy stone. He's a lazy bum. You understand? So you are a, you, you are a dishonor to your father. Next verse. Go ahead. A wise daughter shall bring an inheritance to her husband. But she that liveth dishonestly is her father's heaviness. You see that thing? A wise daughter shall bring an inheritance to her husband. But she that liveth dishonestly is her father's heaviness. Because this sister is a lazy bum. She's a bum also. You've got bum brothers. Yes, you also have bum sisters. Yes, says... She what is as by she that liveth dishonestly. Remember, it says if if anyone if any man walketh disorderly, like we read in Second Thessalonians, it says you must put them out. You understand? Because they don't want to work, they are lazy. So here we are reading, it says, but she that liveth dishonestly, dishonestly is her father's heaviness. Now I want to show you something here. Keep reading, verse 5. Go ahead. Ecclesiastes chapter 22, verse 5. Mm -hmm. She that is bold dishonoreth both her father and her husband, but they both shall despise her. You see that? So now imagine you have a wife, your wife is lazy. You think you're going to be okay with your lazy wife? No. If you are a simp, you will. Yes, it says, it says, she that is bold dishonoreth both her father. Bold, bold was the scripture, meaning what? She don't want to hear the scripts. Both, it says, what dishonored both her father and her husband. It says, but they both shall despise her. That's why you see a lot of the times, you see sisters are married. The husband hates her guts, okay? The father of the daughter hates her guts as well. Why? Because she's what? She's bold towards the scripts. She did not honor father and mother. Now that she's married, She's take that lazy spirit to that house, okay? So what we're reading here, we are not supposed to move in the spirit at all. That's heavy right there. You understand? That's some heavy stuff. Hmm. Watch this. You see that part right there? It says, a wise daughter shall bring an inheritance to her husband. I'm going to show you something. Watch this. Give me the book of Job real quick. Okay? Job chapter 41. Job chapter 41. Okay. Get Job chapter 41, verse 12. Let's read that. Job chapter 41, verse 12. Go ahead. I will not conceal his parts, nor no, no. his power. No, no, I'm sorry. No, Job 42. Job 42, verse 12. Yes, sir. Job chapter 42, verse 12. Read. 
So the Lord blessed the latter end of Job more than his beginning. Right. For he had 14,000 sheep and 6,000 camels and 1,000 yoke of oxen and 1,000 she asses. So now the Lord blessed the latter end of Job. Okay, go ahead. Read. He had also seven sons and three daughters. Mm -hmm. And he called the name of the first Jemima and the name Jemima. of the second Jemima. Says, and he called the name of the first Jemima. Go ahead. And he called the name of the first Jemima mm -hmm. and the name of the second Keziah. Read. And the name of the third Karen Hapuk. So now, what we're reading here, the, the, the daughters of Job, Jemima, Keziah, Karen Hapuk. Go ahead. Watch this. And in all the land were no women found so fair as the daughters of Job. Mm -hmm. And their father gave them inheritance among their brethren. What did, what did our forefather Job did to, 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 to the daughters that he had? And their father gave them inheritance among their brethren. You see that part right there? Is that their father gave them inheritance among their brethren. Go back to Saragna. Sirach chapter 22 and verse 4. I picked the Come verse on. again, sir. Sirach 22 verse 4. Read that. Ecclesiastes chapter 22 verse 4. Go ahead. A wise daughter shall bring an inheritance to her husband. Stop right there. A wise daughter shall bring an inheritance to her husband. You see that? Look, of course, our, 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 um, the daughters of Job, guess what? When they got married, they brought inheritance to their husbands. You understand? They brought inheritance to their husbands. That's what they did. So guess what? Today, as fathers, we're supposed to work extra hard for our sons and our daughters. You understand? Spiritual things, spiritual gifts, and physical gifts. You understand? Because we are in captivity, we must help one another, both men and women. You understand? So the sisters, their sisters must upskill themselves. That's that's what the sisters are doing now. Okay? But I need to. I need to speed up that process because the sisters are dragging their feet. We need to push up that process so sisters can upskill themselves. So sisters can start to have skills. You understand? So that they don't bring the one thing that the women in the world think that's, that's what's going to make a marriage. What's between their needs. Mm -mm. That's not what's going to bring. Um, that's, not, that's not what makes a marriage. You understand? Because if you have to ask yourself, well, okay, the the what's between your knees, your big boobs, your big bumps, what are they bringing to the marriage ring? Hmm? What are they bringing to the marriage? Nothing. Except the fact that, okay, you, you deal with your husband sexually and all that, so on and so forth. But outside of that, what are you, off, what are you bringing to the table? Because imagine a brother has a house. You understand? A brother has furniture in the house. The brother has... Um, He's got a washing machine. He's got a microwave. He's got a stove. He's got, listen, he's got a dishwasher. He's got all these things. When are what you bring it? Because that's the question you must ask yourself. What are you, what do you have to offer outside of the kitchen? What is it? That's why sisters, that's why I keep telling you sisters, get your mind right. Get some, have some have skills. You must have skills. Your value, Proverbs 31, Titus 2. That's how that's the value that you're gonna bring to the marriage. Understand that. Okay. You understand health. You understand um health, diet, hygiene. You know how to deal with the house. You can manage the house. The house is always speak and span and so forth. You know how to deal with your husband, your lord. You submit, you reverence him because you was taught correctly. He was not rebellious. So now when you get married, you, be, you, you bring honor to that man's house. You understand? Understand that thing. So what I'm showing you here is we must begin to do what? We must begin to get our minds right. Okay? So that's why I get on you, brothers. You must improve your skills. 
You can't be sitting there just be on YouTube the whole day. No, 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 no. That's a bum mentality. You can't be bums. Okay? We need to get our mind right. All right? Watch this. Because once you have all these things, guess what? You're going to have to start with, you must enjoy the what? The works of your labor. Get that in Ecclesiasticus. I mean, Ecclesiastes 3 verse 13. Let's read that. Ecclesiastes chapter 3, verse 13. Go ahead. And also that every man should eat and drink and mm -hmm. enjoy the good of all his labor. It is the gift of God. It is the what? It is the gift of God. It is the gift of God. It says you must, you should eat and drink and enjoy the good of all his labor. It is the gift of God. Get Ecclesiastes 2.24 now. Ecclesiastes chapter 2, verse 24. Go ahead. There is nothing better for a man mm -hmm. than that he should eat and drink and that he should make his soul enjoy good in his labor. This also I saw that it was from the hand of God. You see that? That's beautiful right there. So you must be able to want to enjoy the fruits of your labor. That's what the Lord is saying right there. The, none of these things are going to cause, this also goes into what, right now we are laboring in this truth. Our job is to prepare, we must push towards the mark, we must push the truth out as much as fast as we can. Why? Because we're laboring, we're preparing for the second coming of Christ. That's the mindset we all must have, both men and women. All of us, we must have the same mindset. You understand? So I'm going to end the class right there. I'm going to continue on with the last two pillars I'm going to deal with them um, next week, Lord's will, okay? I'm going to end the class right there. All praises to the most High God. Let's break bread in the name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus the Christ. All right? First Corinthians chapter 11, verse 23. No, no, don't call the verse. Just, just read it out, okay? Yes, sir. For I have received of the Lord that which also I delivered unto you that the Lord Jesus, the same night in which he was betrayed to bread, and when he had given thanks, he break it and said, take it. This is my body, which is broken for you. This do in remembrance of me. After the same manner also, he took the cup when he had supped, saying, this cup is the New Testament in my blood. This do ye as oft as ye drink it in remembrance of me. For as often as ye eat this bread and drink this cup, ye do show the Lord's death till he come. Wherefore, whosoever shall eat this bread and drink this cup of the Lord unworthily shall be guilty of the body and blood of the Lord. But let a man examine himself, and so let him eat of that bread and drink of that cup. For he that eateth and drinketh unworthily eateth and drinketh damnation to himself, not discerning the Lord's body. For this cause many are weak and sickly among you, and many sleep. In the name of the Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, we pray. Amen. Thank <laughs> you.